If I kill that bird, Barbara, that's a bald eagle. Get away, baldy! Yeah! Oh, well, good evening, good evening, and good evening. This is The Word with Mike, Pete, and Steve, GovsRadio.com. We are live here at Governor's Comedy Club in Levittown, Long Island, broadcasting live from the Govs Radio Comedy Studio. Mm. Tonight, mm. we have a very special guest, someone that many, many people... Would love to be drinking the beer we'll be drinking tonight. Before we get to him, you don't <laughs> see him on camera just yet either. It's a it's a tease, folks, in radio and television. We tease. You guys get mics around, by the way. You can't talk. I know usually I keep you off, but... Uh, yep, uh, I was waiting. Uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> tonight, we are live on GovsRadio.com. We're also live on Facebook and on YouTube. And guess what? Facebook's working. So what go over to Gov's Comedy Club radio station on YouTube and Facebook and check us out there. You can also give us a call tonight, 516-465-3990, 516-465-3990 to talk to us as we go through the show. We'll be here for the next few hours. Before we begin, we have some words from our sponsor. Stephen, take it away with Rosie's Draft Solutions. Rosie's Draft Solutions is a Long Island family-owned business that provides professional draft beer system services, line cleanings and maintenance, draft beer line system installs, event dispensing solutions, and more. They are very passionate about craft beer and making sure it has the same quality as when it left the brewery and is only done by one way, and that's cleaning those damn draft lines. Cleaning them those perfectly. fucking lines. Cleaning them. Um, <clears throat> Rosie services bars, restaurants, halls, events, and all other beverage establishments, including the Home Kegerator Systems. Home Kegerator yeah. Systems. Uh, they service the likes of W.A. Meadworks, mm. 1940s, Blue Point, Darling, uh, Marich's Field, and of course our boys over at Hopscotch Battleship. Hopscotch? Long Island Avenue. Deer yeah. Park. Yeah. Uh, you can reach Rosie's at rosiesdraftsolutions at gmail.com or call them at 631-219-2075 Monday through Sunday at 9 a.m. to 8 p.m. Mention the what? Get a nice little discount and uh, maybe... Maybe we'll, a smack in the butt. And maybe a little tap maybe on, a little, on the little tush. squeeze. You never know. Hmm. Pinch and squeeze is nice. Yes. Yeah. yeah that's, that's loving. That is love. I said. So give them a call. Rosie's Draft Solution. Tell Nick the word sent you. Receive 10% off your service or order today. And now, Peter, take it away with Beer, beer maker. maker. Beer Maker, your at-home countertop brewing system. Uh, everyone to make beer but didn't feel like spending tens of thousands of dollars to open your own brewery. <laughs> beer <more>. Maker. <laughs> <laughs> at home countertop brewing system, by, by all the way, green. It's hundreds of thousands. Hundreds of thousands. <laughs> yeah, hundreds of thousands. It's, it's, it's getting <laughs> low. <laughs> low balling it over here. Uh, they've got a few new recipes. Uh, do you want to be a basic bitch and make your own pumpkin beer? <laughs> beer maker. Do you want to wait until actually October to have an Oktoberfest? Beer maker. Yeah, there you go. Do you want to brew a Mexican lager That's in, right. in the middle of January? Go beer maker. Right fucking to it. Why go not? to it. Crispy's boys all year long. <laughs> <laughs> Crispy boys. Uh, beer maker. Uh, it's great. It's a lot of fun. Works off an app. Easy to use. Uh, very little cleanup. It's all dishwasher safe. Uh, mentioned promo code the work mm-hmm. for a discount on the uh, on the hardware or on those lovely maker kits. Yes, and they are very lovely. And you can get ten percent off by typing the word all one word into your promo code beermaker.com. We're also sponsored by. Uh, VintageBeerShirtClub.com, VintageBeerShirtClub.com, and get your Vintage Beer Shirt today. We actually got one for our guest today. I found the, yeah, the last nice. one, so I got to talk to my our buddy over mm-hmm. VintageBeerShirtClub.com, mm-hmm. get a new order for our, our guests uh, for the evening. Go to VintageBeerShirtClub.com, type in Wart, W-O-R-T, for your percentage off your subscription, a monthly beer shirt shipped right to your door, VintageBeerShirtClub.com. We're also sponsored by 
<clears throat> Sorry, I got something I'm racing today. Uh, we're also sponsored by Bruce Hardware. Bruce Hardware. For Bruce all Hardware. your large capacity, small capacity needs, go to BruceHardware.com, type in promo code the wart and receive a little percentage off your order. And thanks again for Bruce Hardware for uh, supplying us with little gifts to give back to our brewing guests. Uh, we are finally also sponsored by, of course, Brew Bag. We got to talk about Brew Bag. Yay! We've been missing out on uh, festivals. Uh, not left and right, but we'll have one probably at the Blue Point Cash Shit. Festival. Mm-hmm. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about that one. Uh, but yeah, Brew Bag. Go to brewbag.com. Uh, we have our own web page at brewbag.com. Go into our Instagram and into our profile. and our link tree, you'll see a link right to it. Or you can just type in the promo code the wart and receive 10% off your order of a brand new brew bag set. And now they're using customized labels and vinyl stickers so you can customize for your branding or your home, whatever you want. Go to brewbag.com today. And hmm? the Brewbag backpacks are now in stock. Ah, That's right. I and they're no longer made by slave labor in China. No, they're made right. right here in the U.S. of A. I think that was important, though. I yes. mean, that's, seriously, that's why yes. Scott said he needed to, yeah, to, to pull it him. back on that. So that's awesome. Today and today and today and tonight, we are joined by our guest. It's Kevin from Sand City. There he is. Yeah. Hey. Oh, hello. Hey. Glad to be here, guys. Thanks for having me. Thanks yes, for coming yes, in, yes. Kev. I don't know what my uh, my actual, like, apl- uh, it is. That's the one. Come on, bro. I know. I have there it. There we go. Yeah. Right, well, I always forget. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. It's either that. <laughs> it's either that. A live studio audience. Yep. That's or, as real as the clapping on a sitcom. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, Raymond, I think we should go outside. <laughs> <laughs> it's not even, like, a funny one. Uh, Ken, thanks a lot for hanging out, man. This is, this is great. Uh, yeah. We have so much to talk to you about because we got to get back uh, a ways to where you guys started, but excited to talk about my hometown, Lindenhurst. Yay. Pete's old hometown, Lindenhurst. And Steve, who just will drive aimlessly for hours just to be at in Lindenhurst, Lindenhurst. to yeah, drink all the beer. New hometown. That's it. And so it's everyone's new hometown. Absolutely. Big things are happening. We're so excited since I moved in to Lindenhurst. Uh, oh, wow. Uh, 2009? Uh, we've been waiting for the town to explode, you know, and, and little by little, little pieces here and there building up. It's really starting to come together. So I'm excited. We're going to get into that in a little bit. Uh, just a reminder for everyone, we are live Facebook, YouTube, uh, govsray.com, and the phone number 516-465-3990 right there at the bottom of the screen. Kev, <sighs> so much to go back to. Let's get back to the beginning. All right. Really, I think that's the best place to start. Um, I want to I want to bring us everyone up to date, but we got plenty of time to get to there. I, uh, when uh, working for the last 12 years uh, up in Dix Hills, would always, um, every other uh, Friday happy hour, would be going to Northport just to get something to go. I'd have a few, maybe an hour or so extra time when the kids were really small to go grab a four-pack or something to to take back down south because of what you guys were doing. Um, And I want to try to figure out through all this without giving away secrets, how the hell you can those fucking IPA is so good. <laughs> God damn it. It's just like... Ah. But now, instead of every other Friday going to Northward, now every Friday he just goes to the yeah. <laughs> Every Friday I stop at it. Saturday. Literally That's on my Sunday. way home. If I if I had an electric scooter, I would scoop to it. It's yeah. just a little further from walking distance, and I'm getting older, so I'm not... I'm lazy. It's probably for the best. Yeah. <laughs> for your liver. <laughs> for your liver. <laughs> well... I want to get back to the beginning because I I've never heard really how this all started. So bring us back to the the origins of the brewery. How how you guys uh, picked that space, where uh, you know you and and the other partners came from, and, and what's going on with it, and and how you made so many people angry when you first dared. How dare you dared you know? to get that building? You bastard! You. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, we open up. It's actually going to be six years six years ago on Friday. So wow, that's it. It, it doesn't. Yeah, it seems longer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, six years ago. So huh. we're celebrating our anniversary. We've nice. got uh, a couple of special beers in the tank right now that you could probably uh, maybe maybe conjecture what their names are. Ah. <laughs> um, but um, so so stay tuned for those. Is it just six? Is any one of them called <laughs> hey. Infinity Plus Six? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or just six. <laughs> but so I mean, you know, a little little background on me. I mean, I used to uh, I was in the LIBME Beer Club as a home brewer for many many years. That's actually where I met Steve originally. And, um, you know, like, like many of us, just had the dream of, uh, of going professional with it and opening a brewery. So I was living in Northport at the time. I still do live in Northport. And um, that's, that's, you know, that was like my hometown and just such a beautiful place. And I was like, this, we, a brewery just needs to open up here, you know? So um, 
I had my eye on another building actually for a while there, which which right now is the, the building that we're leasing for our warehouse, which is a really small building down yeah. there. Is it that one right down the it side is, street there? When with I say the warehouse, door? you yeah. know, we're talking 700 square feet <laughs> yeah. of space like most <laughs> warehouses are, right? So Amazon's not beating down your door for the real estate. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'll take you for $2 on the dollar. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, uh, you know, it was brought to our attention that this building was available. And uh, sure enough, we went in there and it was uh, it was it was a great. I mean, it's actually a terrible fit for a brewery, but <laughs> it was the perfect fit for us at the time. So, um, you know, we uh, we went in there and um, yeah. So, I mean, my my partner, Bill, he um, he's he's a friend of mine. He really used to just kind of come over and drink beer while at home brewed. And um, he's he's a teacher. And that was basically his uh, the extent of, to which he brewed beer. So he would he he he'd be sitting next to me. He'd be like picking things from the garden, like let's throw that in there. Yeah, I'm over this floor. <laughs> so, uh, but anyway, so now we've been through we've been through a lot together at this point, and um, yeah, it's just been it's been a long ride. But um, in the beginning, it wasn't even our intention really to come out of the door just you know making IPA after IPA. Um, but because you, you know, know you're not gonna. You're not any good at it. I mean, that's what it is. <laughs> I mean, Those were always it my. It was always my favorite style, which is why I come. Which is why we did have you know three or four of them right away on the board. <laughs> but um, but we were surprised just immediately how um, how well received it was, and how in demand we were. So we just kept all of a sudden it was four, five, six IPAs on the board, and you know the, the, that's just what's selling. Got to give the, the people what they want. Yep. 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 <laughs> But uh, it's nice now. Here we are six years later. We just opened up uh, in our second hometown of Lindenhurst, yep. as you guys said. So um, we opened up there in March. And um, anybody who hasn't been there, we've got 24, 24 rotating taps. We've got uh, some wine. That's it? On tap. Yeah. Just 24 of our we own beer. Have, we yeah. even have some Very, mead. very small place. Yeah. We even have some meat on tap. Yeah, you do. Yeah. From, you are spitting distance from Joe. We yes. are. We are. So he, he makes sure to supply us with... Um, with a, you know... Mita colada. Yep, yep. Rescue mead. Mm-hmm. Mm, what was the other one I just saw? Oh, the Ecto. Ecto yes. uh, mead. Oh, uh, He's always... Special. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That green one. He's always bringing by something special, so... There's the green one, the blue one. Yeah. He's Joey and the colors. <laughs> the colors. Joey and the colors. But the nice thing about, um, you know, the new spot having a lot more taps there is that we are able to sort of play around now with some new styles and um, you know and we're seeing that it is a different crowd and more variety is, is, is wanted down there and some of the styles that wouldn't weren't necessarily our big sellers in Northport now sell like like crazy in Lindenhurst. so get back uh, to I want to get back to that when we get into the beers um, but I there's a rumor floating around did either you or Bill go to St. Anthony's we both went to St. Anthony's ah they, and what year yeah. did you graduate I graduated in uh, 96. Okay. And he was 98. Uh, I'm 97. Oh, I'm right in the middle of you guys. Right. About that. Right. Funny. Uh, you look a whole lot younger than that. Thank you. Yeah, so do you. Do. Yeah, we're yeah. just going to throw compliments at each other. It's so nice. <laughs> Steve, you look exactly yeah. your age. Buddy. Yes, yes. <laughs> yeah, day over 40. <laughs> Wait. I do like the shirt, by the way. I noticed it before. Yeah, there you go. You had to go. Uh, yeah. He was not dead. Yeah, I Too know. Bad. <laughs> I got one for you. I got one for you. You also, Peter. Yeah. It's Christmas now. Okay. No, it's a hat. He it's doesn't a, wear the hat, but we yeah. got him a hat regardless. Uh, so now, like being, being an alumni, yeah. um, you uh, you probably know that the night before Thanksgiving, they're, the Friars, is, they're hosting uh, an alumni party at, at the new brewery. At San City, yeah. Yeah, San City uh, South. South. Oh, so I all, did not know all that. All friars are welcome to come on out. Hmm. Hmm. You notice they didn't let you know. I'm just no. putting it out there. <laughs> how you only just heard about it. I went, I went, to, the, from the Facebook I went to the five-year anniversary, and what was great about that is that we got hammered. We took a limo. We drank in the the, the quad or the um, what's not there now. It's just a big senior uh, – like. Uh, yeah, Nick area. What, what would they call it? Yeah, it used to be the quad. Right? It's a quad, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. it's a senior the court, quad. The courtyard. Courtyard, senior courtyard. There you go. And uh, that was like the surreal experience after all those years of being there and just going, okay, now I can finally. I'm old enough to drink. Mm -hmm. I can drink in a place where I used to talk about drinking, <laughs> mm -hmm. and it just kind of came full circle. And I honestly, my sister graduated in um, 2000, so she was there shortly after me. Um, it was. It was a great place. I honestly haven't been back. I'm one of those guys that like, not that I, I just don't have the time to like put the effort back into treating back to the school. I, I don't, if it was a local school, if it was in Lindenhurst, maybe I'd do it because I'm right there. But because it's up in Huntington and 
you know, we're running around and kids and all that. that life gets in the way sometimes. I'd, I'd like to get back, but mm-hmm. it's tough. It is interesting, though, that the alumni will be there. That's, yeah. and I do get the newsletter still, the, the full, beautiful, like, 80-page what is everyone doing nowadays? I still see buddies like uh, Mike Creighton's on Broadway or Matt Blum is doing this. And, you know, I still. And then there's Michael too. Yeah, and then there's me. <laughs> doing a, it, should, it should say they're doing a shitty radio show and an okay job of teaching. <laughs> but he's got tenure. So. But he's got, ten- <laughs> he's got tenure. So he's. <laughs> yeah, speaking of Michael Creighton, I was watching that show Only Murders in the Building. Oh, yeah. Year, and he's, uh, he's got a couple roles in that. Yeah, so. he was in The Office yep. too. Yep. Um, there's a couple things he was in. Uh, that was one like that was a crew I used to, it's a great thing about Santhes and you were talking about you know the 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 amount of variety of people that would would show up prior to Northport uh South Shore is a little more I guess uh spread out and a lot more different kinds of people especially beer drinkers come out mm-hmm. you could tell um that's the way I felt St. Anthony's was and as much as you know I grew up in my town I I grew up in Amityville I didn't go to Amityville public school but I knew a lot of Amityville people so I hung out that was like one section of friends then we had our crossover friends that went to St. Anthony's but lived in Amityville as well. But then we had all these friends from all over the island, everywhere. St. James, all the way out in uh, Mattituck at one point. My One of my best friends grew up in uh, Bellport, and then my other friend was in Wantaw. And, it was, mm-hmm. it's, and that, I still talk to those two guys, three guys, all the time. Buckley, Brian Buckley. Oh, yeah, yeah. He, uh, the redhead, yeah, he's, he's around. Now he lives in... Uh, uh, Oyster Bay. Oh, I don't know. Lives in Oyster Bay. Just so you know, that yeah. was that was a microaggression. Calling on my redhead. Yeah. I'm just saying. <laughs> well, it's how people <laughs> identify him. <laughs> if you would have said Soulless Ginger, that is okay. Okay, okay you can know. get away with that. No, yeah. most people. Yeah. If you went to Anthony's, he was one of the only redheads besides my ex principal's son. Uh, <laughs> uh, last name uh, Joseph. Uh, what was his first name? Anthony Joseph. Um, you can't he, trust oh, people yeah. with two first names. No. Yeah. So yeah, Anthony Joseph, Matt Joseph. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah the, they the were, brothers. Yeah, they were Joseph, Joseph, yeah, yeah. Good friends. and, and their so mom was my my principal for the Matt. first ten years of my career. Mm-hmm. You and Matt used to jam on a guitar. So yeah, so. yeah, and uh, Friedrich. Remember Friedrich? Yeah. Holy shit! Mm-hmm. I'm going back. We are Friedrich. You remember him, right? No, you yeah, don't I know. And and, and we really appreciate. Dude owes me ten bucks. Still, it's not a person. It was a band. It was our oh okay decently. Like recording, I actually remastered that album. Um, probably like Is it on seven Spotify? years ago. No, it was a cassette. She dropped me a cassette, <laughs> and I had to digitize it and it's kind of master it as best I could with what they had. But I started listening to the music, and I'm like, wow, this actually wasn't bad for like 96, 97. So, uh, so how are yeah. your high school friends? <laughs> yeah, you know, they're all dead because I'm the, I'm the ancient one. <laughs> and I grew up in Brentwood, so, you know, <laughs> MS-13 will take you down. <laughs> <laughs> one by one, they will get One by one. They, I did want to look around. I, I took Santhes all the time, man. I, I, I would love uh, to get back. When, when's the date of the uh, alumni? Oh, it's yesterday. <laughs> of course. <laughs> the night before Thanksgiving. So what is it? Oh, the night 20, before Thanksgiving. Okay, yeah. 20 something of November? Yeah, yeah. yeah. 24, yeah. 30, okay. 20, 20, 20. It's a Wednesday. It's a Wednesday. So, yeah. That's all I got. Mm. Yeah. Those are big, that's a big night to go out. That's pretty cool. That Probably is. the biggest night for DUIs. I was back there on Thursday. <laughs> I don't have to. I live around the block. <laughs> What'd you say? I'm sorry. I was actually just back there on Thursday. Oh, were you? Yeah. Yeah. So believe it or not, I used to, I used to be a math teacher. And, okay. And um, actually, Denise Creighton, Michael Creighton's mother, yep. she runs a, a, a test prep company. Well, wasn't there. she uh, the, the dean of, or, or the, the chair, the board uh, chairperson of mathematics there? No, no, no. She was in the English department. English, okay. But now she's like the alumni director. Okay. And uh, she still runs a test prep company there. So I teach ah. the math SAT portion. Ah, ah yes. Yeah. Uh, in the, um, you know, I just do it for a month in the spring. Yeah. Spring and fall. When it's coming up and just yep. prior. A little yep. uh, test prep. Yep. That's awesome. Interesting. Crazy, crazy connections with the old small world. Small world. Mm. Let's talk mm. about beer. Yeah, right, so, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I want and let's drink <laughs> some of that beer now. <laughs> yeah. So I uh, going back to Northport because you know you, you're walking around, you're looking for the selection. You saw that that you said warehouse area. What was this the the current spot that kind of set you up and really kind of spoke to you? What was it about the space? Yeah, yeah. So the landlord at the time, uh, he he came to us. So he was, uh, he, you know, he was looking for a brewery to go in there because there was another brewery that was going to go in there. And, um, who, who and then that? something. Blind bet. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ah. Was it Paul at the time? Yep. Yeah, yeah. Ah, yep, yep. okay. And then uh, something happened with the two of them. Yeah. They got into, they, they were, you know, he, he signed a lease, but then 
I don't know. I I don't want to get into all that. <laughs> but uh, for whatever reason, it fell through. Hmm. And then um, the landlord was like, well, this is, this is actually exactly what I want here in my building. So um, it by word of mouth came to me that he's looking for a brewery to go in there. So I, I reached out to him, and sure enough, uh, that was it. That nice. Was, that was hmm. the beginning. So. Mm-hmm. Now, you guys moved in there with, with not the current equipment you have now. What was the first you know setup of the, the brew system there? So it is the same brew house. So this exact same equipment from day one. Yeah. So it's the same. Really? It's the same brew house, um, which is a ten barrel brew house, a two vessel brew house, and uh, that's the stuff that's closest to the tasting room. There, you know, it's jammed in there first, um, and then the rest of the building, you know, had the fermenters in there. We started out with uh, two twenty barrel fermenters and two ten barrel fermenters, mm-hmm. um, and those those ten barrel fermenters we um, we got rid of, and uh, we actually sold them to the Dubco. There you go. Hmm. So, um, you know, at the time, I think they still have them now. I, yeah, yeah, they do. So um, we got rid of those, though, and just moved as many 20-barrel fermenters in there as we could because we had no more space to, you know. So the only the only way we could gain volume was by, you know, going, going up. up a little yeah. bit. Right. So How uh, fast did you have to do that, that change? Was it within the first year? What was... So I want to say a few months in, we ordered, really? like, two more fermenters. Okay. And then... Within within a year, year and a half, we got rid of those those tens. We put three more twenty barrel fermenters in there, and and that was that was pretty much the max max we could do. So and you're had, pretty much maxed we, out up there. You're not. That's yeah, the reason had, why we were expanding. But right, right, right. We had seven. We had seven fermenters and one bright tank, and that was that was all the place could handle. Mm. We actually moved a few of those tanks down to Lindenhurst now because we're on a twenty barrel brew house down there, so it's just kind of made a little more sense since our canning lines down there and everything. So we brought a few of those down. We do, um, you know, more brewing in Lindenhurst because it's just a little more of an efficient system. Uh, but we're still brewing up in, in Northport every, you know, every week. In fact, let's see, we're brewing, or I'm brewing, believe it or not, Handsome Maniac on Wednesday and Thursday. There you go. Up in Northport. Last week, I brewed Crip Kicker, our Imperial Pumpkin Ale. Yep. Uh, I like North. that twist Handsome on Maniac's that, by the, the way. triple, right? Handsome Maniac's the, yeah. the Belgian triple, yep. <laughs> I like the twist on the the imperial pumpkin. I, I yeah. do. It, it's not your traditional pumpkin. It's much darker. We'll get into the beers later. But that that to me, I was like, okay, so now someone's in a pumpkin that I want, <laughs> as opposed to <laughs> you know shock top pumpkin, which I was just drinking to drink. And it just, it, I think that'll sustain further. You're lucky you sent nobody. I'd slap you right in your face. <laughs> <laughs> what happened? <laughs> drinking that. Drinking crap. that crap. I know. Well, I knew what I was doing. I just didn't. I, I, have, I, I just was, didn't care. I just didn't care. <laughs> You're like Mark Zuckerberg. I, I didn't. I didn't have access. Okay, Steve, at the time to to, to fancy beers. And did you rim it? No. No. <laughs> you better. You no. better say no. Well, that's why I'm saying the Imperial Pumpkin is like you don't need to. The flavors no. are all in there. You don't need to get and in there. With that's it. what always killed me. Yeah. When you know you have guys go out there and they I never would put the rim. In our brewing, people no like, hey, rim jobs you, at Barrage. Can you rim? I'm like, no, because all the flavor is in the fucking beer. Right. And now you're not going to taste the beer. Exactly. All you're getting is the a beer. sugar, cinnamon. Yeah. <laughs> Just completely, yeah. Don't get me started. <laughs> <laughs> I know not to. <laughs> Calm down, Steve. Calm down. Yeah. You know what I think I need? <laughs> yeah, crickets. A beer. <laughs> <laughs> oh, they're coming for you now. Oh, dude. shit. Oh, dude. See, they heard yeah. you getting a little rowdy. Yeah, do you? Kids today, get off my <laughs> lawn. You Old man yells at clouds. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I so the the entire uh, brew house pretty much to to now is is what it would be in that first year. Yeah, and you guys are just cranking stuff out. And I know, obviously, with the second location, you guys were growing exponentially. But you weren't really distributing. You weren't doing any of that. You may be selling a couple of local sixtals to people in the area. Mm-hmm. And other than that, it was like you you have to go here to get the beer. Right. Was that conscious or was that because you just didn't have a canning line? You didn't want to do like a canning uh, company? So are you talking about Lindenhurst? No, no, no. Uh, up in, in North Port in the early years, yeah. No, it was really just a matter of um, of supply. I mean, we were we were making as much as we, we could make and we, we were selling it all there and to the local restaurants and bars. So we just really didn't have any surplus. Right. Yeah, it wasn't big enough to really go and right. expand out. Right. So that's why, you know, we, we knew we hit a ceiling. And um, in order to get the beer out there a little bit further, we needed we needed another location. Yeah. So. Yeah, and you got the the oops. Mm, mm-hmm. That new iteration is delicious. And that was brewed <laughs> at 
Linnerhurst, right? I yeah. brewed it personally. Not so. at all. You can, you can kind of taste that, right? <laughs> you can, ta- you yeah. can taste a little Kevin yeah. in every can. Exactly. <laughs> oh, yeah, exactly. I don't know. Yeah. Maybe I should just not drink that. <laughs> He's second guessing himself oh, now. No, Shit. I brought something up I didn't want to bring up. Damn it. Yeah, I threw my um, pants in there. So. Oh, good. <laughs> Literally <laughs> hop my pants. Yeah, you uh, go. Uh, my own pants are going to every <laughs> single batch. To, to, to this day, that has got to be the best feed on any freaking Facebook <laughs> was how that came about. The, oops. I hopped my pants. Mm. You remember, well, the, remember the guy? <laughs> <laughs> well, you're, oh, well, all right, all right. Well, actually, they had nothing to do with each other. Nothing to do with each other. We already had the na- We already had the beer. Oops, I, oops, I hopped my pants. But then, yes, I remember what you're talking about. Oh, man. I do. So, so this wonderful gentleman who actually was kind of in the business and uh, he starts just going at San City saying that they put um, uh, like aspartame or whatever in the beer because he drank one of the beers and shit his pants. And everybody's like, what the fuck are you talking about? Is this about person that? known to us? Uh, you probably don't know him, okay. yeah. but uh, a lot of people in the business know he used to be a manager for a local uh, uh, establishment mm. that, that was very big with uh, craft beer, and it it was the funniest thing because everybody attacked him immediately <laughs> about shit in his pants. Yeah. after dr- And I would see Kevin, I'm like, I ain't fucking drinking any of your beer. I <laughs> shit in my pants. <laughs> and, and it was just... The most absurd thing that we anybody and everybody's like, what right. the fuck is wrong with you? No, but I know it, it was it, someone on that on that page that was like, this is just a shameful plug for. Oops, I hopped my pants. You know what? That would have been the smartest thing ever. <laughs> smartest marketing ploy. <laughs> like, hey, uh, so this guy, Newsday's there. You got beer so good, you'll shit yourself. <laughs> <laughs> Sign just me from, up. Just for the taste, you're like, oh, that's so good. <laughs> Yeah. Oh boy! Yeah, it was pretty funny. Some of those yes. comments. I mean, one guy was like, "Yeah, if I have 15 beers, also I'll shit myself." <laughs> <laughs> of course. Yes. Uh, and then it couldn't have been his own, you know, individual makeup of right. what his body does. It had to be the beer. Mm-hmm. And everyone leaving there is just a mass hysteria. He's like, "The only time I ever shit my pants before." <laughs> like, oh, so this has happened several times to you. Wait a second. Me, I maybe. need to dig a little deeper here. Yeah, there's, <laughs> only, there's only been seven other times. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Six of those were because of Arby's. <laughs> this one. <laughs> and no, I did not have Arby's that day prior to drinking. Yeah. Go I look. mean, you guys followed around, um, you know, a, a lot of what Long Island was doing at the time. You guys were part of this community as it's growing. Oh, six years just does not seem long right? enough. I feel like you've been around for much yeah, longer. Seems, yeah, it seems like at least eight years. Yeah, yeah, if yeah. not ten. No, but no, it you, feels uh, feels like a long time to me too. Yeah, I did. Got to be in like I would say the the sophomore class if you want to call it anything of of Long Island breweries. When you guys were were coming up, who were the other who were the other ones on the horizon? I know Harborhead wasn't there yet. I know there was a couple others. Right. What, what was kind of in that same class with you guys as you guys were coming out? Well, I mean, Barrier was a bunch of years before us. Yeah. Um, I want to say, right? We opened up just before you guys. Yeah, so we had. Uh, I'm trying to think who. Mirage, I mean, Great South Bay was they years were before old, us. Yep, they were uh, old. Dubco, 1940s. Dubco. Yeah, uh, us and Dubco, we opened the same. We opened months apart from each other. Mm. So I remember I ran into um, to Chris and Brad at like a brunch. We, we were going to see Michael Tonsmeyer speak, and we were uh, so we were at a brunch together, and um, he's sitting next to me, and and Brad he was so like OCD about checking the uh, the New York <laughs> State you know website to see where their uh, where their application oh, is. Yeah, yeah. So uh, mm. someone introduced him to me as he said, "You're right ahead of you're right behind us on the application. <laughs> did you get approved yet? Because you could if you got approved and we didn't get approved yet." You know, I remember that. I was like, I don't even know what you're what you're talking about. Right now. I'm just waiting for them to send me something in the mail. What is this that says list? Start making beer. But uh, it it's was like follow funny. the standings of baseball. Right, He's yeah. like, you got two more wins, and then I got it. <laughs> Winning the division. So, uh, but then came great friends with those guys. So we were there at their opening. They were they were at ours, and uh, yeah. But how uh, was that opening? Was it received well by the town at that point? If things were going well, the community, everyone was like so excited to yeah, have it was, a it was shocking. brewery in there. It was shocking. You yeah. know, I mean, you kind of like um, 
so much of my energy and time was just put into building the brewery and you, you kind of forget that this is this is like a business and this is you know and and also you, you everything that you put out there you're like it's such a reflection of me so yeah. mm-hmm. you know you're like please like it i mean if you see <laughs> you know you see somebody who like takes a sip and they're like oh you know you'd be like what is it like you know, <laughs> what you, can i do better <laughs> now, you know now now it's like we've been around long enough where you realize people just have different tastes yeah, right. maybe, yeah. you know maybe you just don't like hoppy beers you know but uh, but at the time, you know, so you kind of put it out there, and then all of a sudden you're like, oh, that's right, we we need to make money now in order to yeah. to survive. So um, you know, it was really nice to just see people coming in, drinking the beer, enjoying the beer, and then leaving money for the beer. Right. <laughs> it, it was the first time that the money was coming that way. Yeah. Um, so this is nice. Like to keep the people are spending going. money on my beer instead of me right. spending money. On it. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So, but no, it, it really was great. The first, you know, the first weekend, it was just jam packed in there, and uh, people were having a good time. People were were really enjoying the beers, and uh, and it was all all downhill from there. So now I know you had a hiccup with the town. You guys were shut down for a little while. What were the circumstances behind that, and how did that get resolved? So it was actually dealing with uh, with COs on the the deck area outside the walk up. Um, yeah. Okay. You know. So there was a little bit of a battle, I guess, between it was it was you know my landlord. It was his deck. I mean, he was the one who built the deck, and at the time, the uh, the town administrator, who's no longer town administrator there, hmm. but um, I guess you know he came in and inspected it, and something was wrong. He wanted it fixed, wasn't fixed, and then it was deemed that it was dangerous, and so it it had to get completely we shut down and. That thing was ripped out, a new foundation was poured, new deck was put down. But, you know, in the meantime, we were closed down for, you know, solid three months. And things so were that, swirling around, like the town doesn't want you there. A lot of rumors were going around. Yeah, that's why I asked the question, because nice right, to hear for you. Right. It's just no, a they, simple yeah, construction, I mean, you know, CO issue. Right. The town of Northport, they've honestly, they've worked with us through everything. I mean, of course, we, you know, you have here and there, you've got your, your, your little hiccups and and sometimes little arguments that, that you get into with uh, with certain people, but for the most part, they've been super supportive. Um, you know, they want to see the they want to see Northport thrive, and I think we're the type of business that fits perfectly into that town. I mean, um, it's a the, draw. It's a yeah. draw, and right? you know, yeah. there's great restaurants, great shopping. It's right on the harbor down there. You're allowed to bring your dogs in, so yeah. um, you know, I think that they've they've really seen what an asset it is to the. Um, to the actual community so you know anybody who maybe in the beginning was a little bit uh hesitant about having us there they're 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 all they all have our yeah. backs now yeah yeah just like being in linear seeing that town thrive as little by little businesses come in and start drawing people in you're like oh i mm-hmm. I went out cool. Saturday night in Lindenhurst, couldn't find a fucking parking spot. I had to drive <laughs> around for like 15 minutes. No, well, I'll be honest with you, par- park in San City South, it's the biggest parking lot in the exact vicinity of the town. <laughs> Only, Only if you're, if you're going, going to, to the brewery. <laughs> Which he does. Okay. <laughs> well, I said to him, I, I know he's going to stop so, there. So I grew up there. Uh, my parents still go to church, you know, two doors down from where your business is. And, you know, when I was a kid, I used to remember hearing, you know, every fucking Sunday during announcements, there was, you know, uh, on Sundays, we may, you know, you're allowed to park at the bank next door. You can never use the CVS parking lot. <laughs> <No. laughs> so mm-hmm. I think I avoid it just out no, of No, I mean, that, that parking, <laughs> you know, that parking lot was, uh, I mean, the building was abandoned for the, you know, past. Uh, like 10 years, I think. However long it was a long time. Yeah, a long yeah. time. So plenty of people have taken a parking there. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> they still now are like, don't you tell me I can't park here. And you're like, it's ours. It's, it's, yeah. Like we, not that we anymore. Now, this is our property. <laughs> <laughs> I do like that they put that small lot between you and Restoration yeah, uh, over great. there on the back, so there's a little more. They're, they're starting to find spaces for more I people, mean, more usually people. Usually you can find parking. You yeah. have to drive around for a minute, but, yeah. but there's parking to be had. There was a fun little study that the, the village had commissioned to figure out, like, how can we make, you know, Lindenhurst more walkable? How can we draw businesses there? And, you know, do we need, you know, what do we need to do about the parking situation? Because that's, that's a complaint from people who live there is, you know, I, I can't find a fucking parking spot. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And they commissioned the study, and the study said there's actually a surplus of parking. <laughs> <laughs> All right. $250,000 for someone to tell them, yeah. no, you don't have a fucking problem. There's two, yeah, yeah, no, it's like, yeah, but I want it's parking fine. right outside <laughs> of my business, right there, right outside of my house. I don't want to go to North, North John Street <laughs> to try to park in that church parking lot up there. 
I mean, there's that whole wall bounds that is I was it's just gone. Say, it seems like the biggest Nothing. fucking waste of real estate in it's that, gotta be in that village, man. I mean, they built the uh, the it's housing huge. on the other, on the south side of the tracks, right, right. which is awesome. It is um, the, the and it's former beautiful... kitchen place, former prison. Yeah, the now well. The the well. Mm-hmm. The well. Yeah. yeah, and it's well, it was it's... Lakeville Kitchens, and before it was Lakeville Kitchens. Yes. Oh, you mean the fucking prison? Yeah, it's true. And uh, so now on the opposite side of that, the other side of the train tracks, you this uh, empty lot. First of all, parking. Yeah. They should have just left it open. I understand what they're trying to do, but well, if they leave it open for parking, someone's got to pay to maintain it. I agree. That's in what the I'm, winter. I, so and if the village took it over, which I don't think they're going to buy, then they take it, over the liability. Correct. <laughs> and, and then you got the abandoned building, which then you still have to fence off now that you have that right. parking. So <laughs> it, it, I don't see why no one's really jumped on it. It's a prime real estate. It's now it's huge. And, it, and it, yeah, it's a huge, huge space. Which might be part of the problem. It might be too big for, you know, they may want well, too much money it. for it. Someone's oh, got it. I don't, why I don't why wouldn't you? I don't know. It'd be nice to have like a small parking area there for the public yeah. and then use the rest of it for more housing. And then you have give, walkable give someone a tax abatement to, you know, carve yeah. out for 20 spots and then more like more traffic, foot, foot traffic into the town and the village and mm-hmm. everything else. I Maybe just, you should run for mayor in Lindenhurst. Uh, it's too much. <laughs> I don't know. Do, it. Do, you, do, you, do you want to get yelled at? Imagine being <laughs> the mayor of the town now. Or the Imagine village being now. at any level of government anywhere in the country <laughs> Ever, right, right now. now. No, it's a hard no. No, I don't want to deal with people. Not Not at that level. We've all seen sure. those videos of school board meetings. Oh my god! Oh boy, I don't want to get into it. Did you see the Linnehurst one? No, but I yeah, I fucking my town Farmingdale made made the made like News Twelve for it being like oh did well, they for it being so fucking aggravating. Well, they said more fucks than you are tonight, so probably that's <laughs> I, I, well, it's, I'm a product of my environment now. Right. That's so. just uh, you know, well, fuck you then. Yeah. <laughs> Anyway, the uh, the town of, of Linnehurst, how did you get to that point? Because you guys obviously were walking around, Long Island, not literally, but like cruising around Long Island, <laughs> trying to figure out your next location. You're outgrow- not outgrown, but reach, reach your capacity, reach your, your top of what you can do there. What were some of the other towns you, you looked at? Where were you looking around? What was the thought process? Was it South Shore only? Was it East, West? No, we were open to any location that, you know, I mean, Finding the right building to put a brewery in is a it's 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 a task. So we've heard, yeah. <laughs> so um, no, <laughs> I had the shittiest one. <laughs> so um, you know, we knew that we wanted something that was well. We we liked what we had in Northport. We thought that it was a good model where you know it's a downtown area. You get foot traffic because you know a lot of breweries they open up in industrial parks and things like that for obvious reasons. I mean, you're just manufacturing cheaper, products. right? Cheap. It, code requirements, exactly, all of that, yeah. exactly. A lot of those buildings have floor drains already, things like that. You know, um, so but but we realized that you know having that tasting room that's in a downtown area. I mean, that's just huge profit. So yeah, and I mean you know. <laughs> It'll, it can, you know, it'll, overhead. It can, easily, <laughs> it can easily make up for that increase in rent. You know? yeah. Sure. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. So we kind of really wanted something like that. Now, with that in mind, you know, look at all, how many towns can you think of that have a building like that that are on sewers? Yep. That's a huge thing. Um, and, you know, going to have that kind of foot traffic. So, you know, Patchog was immediately something we thought of. Uh, but out there, there's there's one brewery, I think, out there, isn't there? <laughs> <laughs> it's a little guy. <laughs> you remember that? I, Maybe he opened it up a little bit before you. I think, <laughs> right, right, I right, think right, right. Mike and I, I we were there once. Hmm. Yeah. Which place? Uh, a little brewery out in Padua. Oh, oh, uh, oh. oh um, green blue. Yeah. Something. Is, yeah. Blue. No, no, blue, I think it was blue. red. No, red blue. turnover. <laughs> oh. I, had, I knew it was like brick. There's a lot of brick. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I remember yeah. seeing lots of bricks. The brick house. The brick. brick. No, wait, no, no that's that's, 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 that's the other one. Yeah. 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 Really well, quick, we're checking on Instagram Live. Uh, a couple people checking in. What's going on, everybody? Give me a thumbs up in the chat if you hear these the audio. I can't quite tell uh, on my end whether you can hear it or not, but I'm pretty sure I set it up right tonight. <laughs> 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 yeah, well, not that kind of audio. Not like weird, like. Um, but yeah, I mean, to to us, you know what you what you did for the town. To, for me as a beer drinker and, and many really people. Mike yes <laughs> really is. thank you <laughs> beyond a shadow of a doubt for coming into Linnerhurst I I I would assume it's because of that space that space had to like really jump out at you because it was unused mid- walking you know for foot traffic uh, it's right space right you in the, the middle of the town you, you know, have the it's... access in the back you know if, mm-hmm. if you want to do your trucks I mean yeah well truthfully so I mean the village came to us so RJ Renner reached out to us said you know I love I love your beer um, 
Lindenhurst would be, a, we would love to have you. It'd Did you have a lot spot. of like quarters with people courting you from when they found out? <laughs> no, not Plenty at all. of suitors. Not at all. <laughs> not at all. But uh, but sure enough, so he he showed Bill around. The, he literally picked him up, drove him in his car, showed him around <laughs> a couple buildings in Lindenhurst. Um, this being one of them. And originally, we 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 loved the location of the building, but we didn't like the building itself. Yeah. Because it was an old CVS that had. A wood floor throughout mm. so i had no idea that place had a fucking basement too that was yep. that was surprising yeah. yeah so i mean it had um you know ten thousand square foot building but all wood floor so we're like how you know how, how are you gonna make this work i mean either you're going to have to um add a whole bunch of concrete in there uh and which steel has to be supported to, exactly so for structural support um and then, so we, we kind of passed on the building because we're like, oh, just to, to, to reinforce that floor the right way. Um, like, any of you guys ever been out to, to Montauk Brewing Company? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Out there? Have you seen their, their backspace there? I don't know if you know. It's, it's reinforced. That whole floor no, is just I reinforced. The pad, There's a yeah. basement underneath it. So they had to pour all this, you had to put all this steel and then reinforce it with tons of rebar and pour concrete over that. Almost like a, a, uh, a highway overpass. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Crazy. Um hmm. And we're like, you know, it's just going to be a fortune. And so um, so we actually passed on that building. And then we were looking at other places in... Where else in the... Can I ask you where else in the nurse they showed you around, if you remember? Yeah, um, it was over on on Montauk Highway. Um, I forget what's, you know, what's there now or what was around there. But there, there was one other building, really, that was, like, a possibility for us. Was it a corner? Yeah. That one B and B fish house. market. You literally Kirby. were at, on my block. Oh so, yeah, Southside yeah. Food, and then there was a uh, like a old, like one small little business and an old it's house, and then there was yeah. the old B and B fish market that was on that other one. They I think were right next like to each other. Like a music shop over there too, or something. There point. might have been at one point. Mm-hmm. There was something a smaller like a uh, thing over there yeah. set back a little bit. Yeah, I mean at this point, it was and they three were showing it ago. off. I remember yeah. seeing people so, doing it, you know, and now they tore it down, and now there's the Heatherwood. Have no, uh, G, whatever those construction guys are, do everything on Merrick Road. It's all the same stuff, cookie cutter kind of thing. And they, and that's where, uh, the new, um, hair cutters is. The, uh, American gentleman, uh, moved in there. That's where I go. Oh. Yeah, <laughs> I know. American gentleman, right, yeah. it was right on my block. Right. Well, what do they, what do they have to work with? Well, you know, I'm, I'm thinking American gentleman <laughs> or Sand City. It wasn't big enough, though, right? It yeah, really just it, wasn't it, big it enough. It wasn't, and it wasn't the right spot. Yeah. So, um, no parking uh, anywhere close, to be honest with you. Maybe a little bit on the lot next door if you. Yep. And you have to do a lot more construction. Yep. That might have been a tear just, out. That place it, was abandoned for years. It was just not the right spot at yeah. all. So, um, so then we, we kind of passed, we, and then maybe like. Six months later, we came back to it and we just said, you know, we looked at it again and we're like, you know, if we just tear this floor out of here and just sink the brewery down below, you know, it'll be, it'll be, we could keep the tasting room up high as it is now. And, you know, but now how are we really getting all of our stuff in and out? You know, I mean, Hmm. so then we started looking into industrial lifts and ramps and that sort of stuff. Right. So, and, uh. Eventually, we just said, "Fuck it, we're just gonna <laughs> we're just gonna forklift stuff in and out," you know. And that was the that was the easiest thing. Don't get me wrong; it was a lot of work to remove that whole floor. Then we had to pour a new, you know, a whole new. Um, but what was slab? Yeah. What was so cool though is you used all that wood to build the bar, to build the tasting room, Absolutely. the tables, yeah, yeah. the. And when I first found that out, Kev was like, "Yeah, yeah, no, it's." All these tables. All reclaimed wood. They were so, I was like, that is fucking awesome. Yeah. There was so much wood, so many wood beams. And um, yeah, we held on to all of them. And I'm like, we're never going to use all this. And we we still have about 12 beams left. But we you know, we started with 200, something wow. like that. We just, we just started you, <laughs> making everything out of wood. You got you to gotta come over to my house. I, I got this bar in my backyard. It's sick. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I, know, I built it this summer. It was awesome. But yeah, I mean, we're making tables. We're, the whole bar's made out of it. The... Uh, in the bathrooms, all the trim, the doors. Oh, yeah, you know, yeah. I mean, everywhere right. you look, it's that it's that reclaimed wood from there. So it it um it adds a nice feel to it, and, yeah. and it's obviously makes sense to use. And it also hit a lot of the other checklists, right? They have sewers. Yep. The uh, the water supply is good, and yep. and that mm-hmm. much has to be done to you know correct water right. for that matter. Mm-hmm. Um, yep. Sanitation, easy access for the most part. Yep. And you guys put a is that a grain silo out back, so you had the space for that. Yep. Yeah, so, uh, again, you know, having the parking lot and having the back parking lot place for, for a silo, I mean, all these things are just, like, again, more reason to be there. That building that building is pretty ideal, yeah. you know? 
And so. what you did to it really transformed it from what it was. Mm-hmm. I mean, I remember going in there as a kid, well, not a kid, but younger guy at CBS and just, this has got to go. This thing's got to go. Buying condoms again, right? Yeah, well. Yeah. Yeah. And then lady goes, you're buying only condoms? Like, she embarrassed me. <laughs> <laughs> How old are you? <laughs> Can I see ID? I'm like, I'm 41, dude. <laughs> Come on. Come on. Well, I have bitch. two kids already. I don't want any more. I don't want these anymore. <laughs> good. Oh, man. Well, I think that's a good segue to start drinking some beer. Yeah. Let's there get you go. warm over here. Yeah. yeah. Let's, let's do it. Go for it. At any time. <laughs> I, uh, I, I want to talk a little bit about the, the, um, the history of Lindenhurst for just a moment while you're doing that. The Tower um, of Breslau? The Tower of Breslau. <laughs> uh, you guys had a whole bunch of, uh, when you moved in, um, uh, businesses were there, but it wasn't quite to where it is. You got like Hermanas just came in and um, you got so Belfast that set up and then you got a bunch of mm-hmm. Pacudo and... Uh, a lot more business coming in. There's a, a business right across the street, the bank, the old bank that's not done. That was supposed to be some uh, one of the – was it um, – Mary Carroll's. Mary, Mary Carroll's was going to buy in there and do something. Mm-hmm. Has, has there any been an, any kind of movement on that since – Well, they, they're, they pulled out. They're right, not, yeah, yeah. No, I know that. But I, anyone else interested in it? Because that's you know how, a prime Do stick. you know how many messages and emails I get? You set up a that, barrage across oh, yeah. the street from Sun Oh, yeah. City. <laughs> Are we come on, it? do it. Yeah, They're like, come on, do it. I'm like, uh, it's huge space. I you don't need a want to there. I don't want to die in my sleep. You'd have to, you'd have as to my wife there. takes one of my rifles and just puts <laughs> it into my temple. <laughs> Not again. Cheers. Cheers. Hey. Cheers. Clink. Clink. Cheers. 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 Is it putting out fires? This is yeah. putting out fires. Yes. Mm. So 5.4% session IPA, IPA we whatever you want to call it. Um, we got Citra Motueka in here. Nice, light body, easy drinking. It's just like I remember. It's tasty. I think the last time I had that was out of the Northport, and it was one of those first ones, of course, when I started going up there and on you know a monthly basis to pick stuff up, and I went, all right, yeah, let's try the new stuff, man. That one stood out, and mm-hmm. and handsome maniac. Mm-hmm. I don't think I I've had such a crazy flavor of a Belgian triple that I got from that, um, and I I love that one too. There's, there's so many of them that have. I mean, how many beers do you think you've you've put out since you guys have started? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> let's go to video so, tape. Yeah. Go to, you're Warner Wolf. I mean, yeah, uh, I mean roughly, uh, would you say a hundred different oh, labels or I, more than I, that? I'd say closer to three hundred, maybe. Three hundred wow. labels. Yeah. Yeah, what were the ones? What, give me one that just has never been brewed again. It was a one-off. You were done. <laughs> what shit the bed, Kevin? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. Man hands. I think it was. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, you know what? It's not even things that shit the bed. But we brewed. Um, we brewed a black IPA. You know, t- a couple t- years ago. Great style, right? Jesus it's, Christ! I but it's one of those like, like, like inside you know baseball what? styles. Shit. Like Dubco does a great one. Eleanor to me is. Comes out next week. Yes. <laughs> oh, they're, so yes. They're, they're, gonna, they're deciding to brew a beer that they're going to sit on for the next year. That's cool. That's cool. And I'm not saying that Eleanor is not a great beer. I'm I'll be the saying, only one to get it, but at least there's plenty of Eleanor to go yeah, around. I mean, with. it was like I loved you know getting into brewing, and before I opened the brewery, I loved Black IPA. That was yeah. such a good style. It's so good. So then we uh, fucking Wookie Jack from friggin' oh, yeah, yeah, Wookie Jack. Wookie they don't was... brew that anymore. No, you didn't yeah, go it. figure. Go figure. <laughs> because they weren't selling it. Right. Um. So the market for that for that style, man, it just died. Yeah. And you don't see those anywhere anymore. So we, uh, you know, we brewed it once or twice, and and it was like, you know, I was like, this, this beer is awesome. I love this beer. It was. Uh, but if you're sitting on it for like Sim- three months, <laughs> Simcoe and Amarillo, we hopped it with. It was it was yeah. But uh, the last batch of it, we're just like, you know what? This just doesn't make sense to take up yep. our cooperage, our tanks, our, you know. Um, so we brewed, We haven't brewed that again. But people still ask for it, you know. I'm asking for it. <laughs> <laughs> that? I, I, I really do. I black IPA is probably top top three favorite style. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Really? Oh yeah. Oh, without a doubt. I when when Dubco's Eleanor comes out, I'll be there with probably half a case, because it'll go. I mean, the last last year when he did it or during the pandemic they were doing the ship to your door and we'll uh-huh. talk about you know how you guys did yeah. what you did during that time um that that's the first thing when i saw that pop up on their website and i went oh they got the black half a case without even questioning anything i that's i needed to get that because that's what was the one we had just recently black um, ipa yeah 
Yes. Um, they would have been I, something I, I sought I, out. I know. Yeah. Pete's like, that was six it's, years ago. <laughs> was it Garvey? The Garvey's or was it, uh, it was something? We just had it. We, not Bright Eye. Who the hell? Black I don't think we had a Black IPA recently. Yeah. I haven't. Yes. On purpose. <laughs> Sure. Not my, it's not my You're a jerk. <laughs> I, I, I do love it. I, I, that's you know if it, they, it, that's the first thing. If I see on the board, I'm getting now in case it sells out. Gunco didn't brew a lot of it though. It's, a, it's in one of their ten barrel. Cups. That one, yeah. All right, so, so that's why it ran out. So I went to go order a second round because I went through that within mm, a couple days. And <laughs> it's the pandemic. You got to drink. Um, and it was sold out. And I went, oh. And I don't really think they've brewed it since then. You know, maybe, maybe, we'll, maybe we'll try one this uh Dad, do, do, this it as, do the small you know, one. Don't do the huge release. We'll but do it over in Northport. We'll oh, do a little yeah. temporal batch of it. Black maybe we'll do it. We'll oh. see, it, see how it is. Yeah. Like it. Maybe the market's come around. Yeah. A lot <laughs> or of people maybe been, it's not. He's going to an- fucking come and kick is, our asses. Um, and definitely call it IPA. Porter. Oh, yeah. So, you know, we did a smoked porter. Beach. It was called Beachwood. Yeah. Um. Or, no, I'm sorry, Beachfire. Beachfire. Oh, yeah, Beachfire. Yes. smoked. Yeah, yeah. So, um, and it, I guess that was probably four years ago that we brewed that beer. And um, I loved it. It was like, I was just drinking it, you know, pint after pint. And that was another one just sat around for a while. And, uh, but people, again, asked for it. You know, that'd be at a least, nice at least with beer. That Schwartz one, beer. At least with Black that water. one, it can, it could stay around a little while. It can yeah. stick around. So can the Black IPA, though. Yeah. It really is not roasty. like the other ones yeah. where, you know, exactly, so... I'm gonna have, when I when I go off Instagram Live, I'm gonna go check which one it was because I know I, I drank one very recently and I was like, yes, black IPA, sir. Mm-hmm. Um, that one though it was pretty much once and done just because of the the selling market. Anything kind of came out and you're like, nah, it's not really kind of representing us or anything like that. I would imagine early on, right? I mean, or, it wasn't or something. Have you had to dump a batch where something you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We we um, you know, luckily we haven't we have not dumped a batch in a long time. Um, certainly not any in Lindenhurst, but, um, yeah, I mean, in Northport, there were definitely a few that, that, you know, I mean, it, it happens yep. and, um, you know, you don't want to put something out there, even if it's questionable. And so. it's the shittiest feeling. It's gotta yeah. be. As the hose is going down the drain, you're just it's terrible. Like, <laughs> it's just, just washing money, away money. Just take your money <laughs> and just fucking throw it. I but was, um, we also I, lost two batches of beer just for other reasons, like a uh, a tri clamp that that busted. Oh. Uh, we had <laughs> those things are so reliable. How, I'm, how I'm not being sarcastic, they are. How yeah. expensive is a tri clamp, or rather, how cheap is a tri clamp and then turn to be very expensive? Yeah, 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 yeah you know. <laughs> um, I, and I can say this because I was the one who did it, so I'm, uh, the, okay. I'm the schmuck. <laughs> uh, but early on. You know, I was going and um, uh, I, I was at the brewery by myself. It was late at night. It was back when I was still teaching and brewing beer and all this. So um, I decide, you know, I'm going to rack off. I'm going to keg off this this batch of beer. I think it was Stormborn. Oh, right? so our oh. Belgian Blonde. Yeah, I love Stormborn. And um, so, you know, there's a tri-clamp fitting and then a, a butterfly valve. And then that's where you hook the, the hose up to or, or you're kegging apparatus right up to that, right? So um, I go on and, you know, I put the, uh, I hook the, the keg filler up and I fill off like one or two kegs, right? And then I had to like, I had to run, run somewhere. So I'm like, all right, let me disconnect this. I disconnect (laughs) from the other side of the the butterfly valve. And it's over. (laughs) So now you've got, thank God it was a 10 barrel batch. Well, I mean, not thank God. I wish it was a three barrel batch. But But I uh, have nine barrels of beer. Yeah. yeah. (laughs) But, but. But, you know, thank God it was a smaller batch. But you got to realize, too, this is carbonated beer under pressure. Yeah. Oof. So, so this way. this isn't just like, oh, it's all just leaking out on the floor. <laughs> this is like a fire hose blowing you ac- across the room. You see it? It's on the ceiling. It's, you know. Yeah. Do you have, uh, do you have uh, uh, security cam footage of that? I don't. Did it make uh, it on Wurt Wrangler? Yeah. <laughs> I, don't know. I mean. Those are the best. And, and it's terrifying. But the, then the, the worst part is, too, I um. so, you know, what do you do, right? So you get over there, you put your hand on it. <laughs> now I it. got this, right? <laughs> I'm sitting here, I got my hand, I'm like, shit. Now, what are you going to do? I can't even reach anything. You know, I mean, <laughs> even if there was like a fitting that, that even if you could reach it, you're not going to be able to get it on, you know, because it's under, it's under 20 pounds, oh, 15 pounds of pressure. Um, but I'm just reaching for a paddle. And for like, like, for like a half hour, I'm like, I can figure this out. <laughs> <laughs> There's a way I'm going to be able to keg this beer, you know? And then I was just like, Damn, this is I your version know. of like 147 I think, hours. I, think I, I sat there till like midnight and I'm like, you know what? Fuck this. It's gone. So that was a, that was a uh, bad day. Which one was it? was the Stormborn? Stormborn yeah. yeah. Oh. 
Khaleesi would not be proud. No, no, no. Oh. <laughs> she would not. Can I cut off my own arm and see? <laughs> There's no duct tape. There's no nothing I can get to. That's crazy. I mean, that's that's got to be said. And 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 the cost. Thanks for a good story, though. Yeah, I'm sure it does. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's worth it's worth the time and effort. Six years later. Yeah, it's a great story. You said that you guys haven't had any issues with Lindenhurst. How was that setting up a brand new system? Were you nervous at all putting out that first beer that was coming off that line? Um, I mean, I wouldn't say nervous. You're kind of interested in seeing how how things are going to translate. Um, but, you know, I mean, the first beer we brewed in Northport, you're just nervous. Because yeah, you're like, sure. Shit, you know. Um, Here we go. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> but, no, I mean, at that point, I think we were sort of had things a little more dialed in. We were a little more professional in our in our brewing expertise there so we um you know we knew we hit all our numbers we pitched the right amount of yeast beer fermented well um so we weren't too too upset we weren't too um worried anxious. Yeah, yeah or anxious that it was gonna it was gonna come out bad but was was it a recipe you'd done in Northport previously or was it a new recipe so for it? the first beer that we brewed there was oops i lindied my pants okay yes. okay so variation so it was, it was the oops oops recipe uh different hops that's it so, um, and it, it, you know, it came out great, I thought. So there were really no I issues. It. it was good. So but we have a bunch of people checking on Instagram. Uh, Charlie Becker was saying oh, hi. Hi, Charlie. Hey, Charlie. Uh, Brewers Roots is, is hanging you out. old bastard, you. <laughs> <laughs> Joe's here. Joe Bruzo uh, texted me. I invited him. I said, if you have time, come by, swing by. Kevin's here. And he just saw it, and he goes, sorry. I did, if I wish I saw this sooner, I would have been by. Uh, but hi, Joey. And then uh, a couple people that. I'm sorry my dog went after your dog, Joe. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> At uh, your brewery. <laughs> Joe says, what's up? Uh, there's a couple of Long Island. Can't take him anywhere. Uh, what is this? Craft Not Crap, L.I. Say, what's up? Uh, it's hard to see sideways when I do it sideways. It's just a better shot. You know, people watching on Instagram, I'd like to use it this way, but I'm more of a cinematic film guy. I like I like wide-angled 16.9. Mm-hmm. Feels better. But it was weird on, on live Instagram. <laughs> so people got like, mm-hmm, got to type the thing. And, uh, yeah. Uh, at, he's at San City. <laughs> he's there. Who, <laughs> Joe? Yeah. Shots he is. Yeah. What a surprise. Well, yeah. <laughs> Bringing the dog over. He's like, hey, come, come pet Hazel. Everyone take a look. Mm-hmm. Um, you guys uh, put that, the oops, I lindy my pants. Uh, obviously, you've there's been a bunch of different events that have happened over the summer. And now, how has that you know translated business picking up about steady the same? I know it was crazy those first few days. I honestly had to stay away. Yeah. And then on like a Tuesday when you guys were open, I'm like, now's my chance to, <laughs> to bite. <laughs> Running, uh, got to get in. Um, yeah, I mean, what, what's what been the, the turnout? It's been constant. It's been up and down. What, what's the – and because of COVID, obviously, things have been weird, right? I mean, I, you guys had some sort of reservation system at one point, or did you just go no, with – No, no, no. We, we, we never we never got Didn't even that. make it, it that, really right? It was just a matter of, you know, in the beginning – when when everybody wanted to first come check us out, you know, it was, it was crazy, and uh, and also we were at half occupancy or whatever it was at the time there. So but we just um, that's no, it was just you kind of got to wait, you know. That was just the way we yeah. were. Just it's and there's a you know the turnover is pretty quick. Usually, and it's a so. bit fairly big space for it's breweries big on big Long Island. I mean, it's... I never saw I never saw anybody wait more than may, maybe like 15 minutes to get in, you know. So. Um, uh, but anyway, since you know, since the the first month or so we were open, then all of a sudden, with the, everything opened back up too. So yeah. we were at a hundred percent occupancy. So um, you know, it's it's been it's been a steady a steady clientele in there. I mean, it's been been good. We have uh, our my my wife and I have friends uh, live down in New Jersey, and and just just speaks about how you know word gets around. But when they found out that you guys moved to Lindenhurst and we live in Lindenhurst. They literally made a whole trip just to come out so they can come to the brewery and definitely have an excuse. Definitely not see you guys. No, no, no. <laughs> was not. It was definitely just to go to San City. And we spent most of the day at San City. And they're like, oh, they're like, well, we got to go. I'm like, no, no, we'll just go, let's go visit other places. We want to come back. We come back. <laughs> but, uh, you know, the, the word of San City, the, the mindset and everything else, you guys were able to go beyond Long Island. I mean, there's people trading your beers online. Mm-hmm. Allegedly, um, there's lots of, of clamor in the you know the hierarchy or royalty of, of online beer you, you know compared to Barrier or Monkish or if you want to say other half at this point, um, yeah. How did how did how did that develop? How did what do you think was the the key to that whole success, the brand recognition kind of idea? 
I mean, I think we just kind of got into the game at the, the right time when um, we started brewing, you know, the New England style IPAs, not even really necessarily meaning to brew those those specifically. We were brewing some West Coast styles too, but yeah. we, um, you know, but we were we were using, you know, the, the London yeast that, that a lot of the uh, New England brewers are using and, um, you know, just creating those those hazier beers and, and then hopping them with whichever hops we could find, you know, from New Zealand hops to yeah. some of the copious great, amounts, you know, <laughs> hops so much. Out Washington. And, um, you know, and so I think all of a sudden it was, um, we're, we're in the right spot where a lot of the Long Island folk, you know, they were going into the city every Saturday to wait on half another, you know, wait, wait online another half, um, or going up to Treehouse Trillium, making those, you know, more further, obviously further. I'm up glad to. you mentioned Trillium. It usually gets forgotten about when you mention Treehouse. <laughs> uh-huh, I uh-huh. like Trillium better personally, but that's okay. Mm-hmm. So, um, <laughs> I do. you know, I mean, so many people were just coming in there like, you know, here you are making, making these, the style of beers it's, and you know, it's every bit as good as, as you know, going up there. So all of a sudden we just started getting that, that market of people who are coming in and they're comparing us to. To some of those breweries that um, that obviously had a lot of hype at the time, and um, with a very similar model, because yeah. you guys weren't big enough to distribute yet, mm-hmm. and that wasn't a choice; that was just a limit. And so, when you have places like Trillium and Treehouse that don't distribute on purpose to get the hype up, um, it it becomes a net negative at one point, right? I mean, at, at some point, people are like, "Oh, they're selling out," or "Oh, they're just so elite," or whatever. And you guys weren't trying to do that; you're just doing your thing. Yeah, we were just brewing beer, and it was like we were able to sell it right there, and it was it was great. So, yeah, no complaints. Out the back door. Yeah, <laughs> out the back door. Dude. Literally, that's right. It would be that line, and you're just like, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I used to do. I used to go right on uh, what's the the street behind the Scudder? The Scudder. Scudder, yeah. Mm-hmm. Used to park there and then walk to the back, and the little table set up. Yeah, I'll yeah. take this, 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 and this, mm-hmm. and bow. Uh, Charlie's checking back in. He says, "What's up, guys?" Charlie Becker. What's up, Charlie? Oh, man, river. <laughs> that old man, river. He can see you perfectly, like literally he in the shot. He keeps on flowing. <laughs> He's got some stuff happening soon, too, right? Uh, yeah, yeah. There, uh, I still can't wait till they start doing the Civil War reenactments yeah. in his parking lot. <laughs> and he could be back in the day when he was <laughs> the man. Truly, truly oh, doing his man. thing. When he would put the cannonball in and he would... <laughs> He remembers that so fondly. He would write with his uh, feather pen. His feather to my dearest, to my, my dearest Loretta. Well, coming from the spring chicken himself over here. <laughs> hey, anytime there's somebody older than you, you fuck with them. Yeah. <laughs> you may never get the chance again. That's right. That's right. Um, so I, tell us a little bit about the, the name. I mean, that did it come from uh, some experience? Was it based upon your Northport location? What were you? Sand City. Yeah. The name Sand City. Yeah. yeah. So Sand City is um there used to be a, a sand refinery in in Northport. Oh. Um so like a barge out there? Was it like a, a, there, on there, the harbor? There's or? a building out and now it's known as Sand City. It's it's where all the boaters go. There's like uh there's still the island where the factory was is still there. Really? Um and can some you, of the ruins. Can you beach and do that? Yeah, that? so there's a beach right that's there and then cool. a little island off the beach, and that's where the uh that's where the factory is. But they used to um actually take the sand from the pit in Northport. Uh-huh. Oh, shit. So there's that area of the pit there. Yeah. They would go and, and then um, they'd refine it and they'd, they'd basically barge it up over to, to Manhattan to use to make wow. bricks. So That's lot, pretty cool. A lot of buildings in New York City are, are you know, built with sand from Sand City. So, uh, you know, the name is obviously from there. Now everyone just knows, like, Sand City is a place to go with boats. Like, yeah. go over to Sand City and, you know, it's, everyone ties up and and... Drinks a few beers and swims in the water. It's a great, great mm. little area. But you know, all the all the locals and you know, and a little bit beyond, no Sand City for that. Oh, well, now so I we do. We thought it was a cool for us. We were like, all right, it's we can sort of have that real local name, but it's also a name that's going to be recognizable, you know, beyond that because you know, it, I mean, Sand City just kind of means like, hey, I just want to hang out on the beach. Yeah, it feels like yeah, yeah. just that vibe. Right. Um, you guys continue to make, you know, some of the same styles. What do you think is the most created, most, re- I guess, repeated style or brand that you guys have been putting out? <laughs> I mean, There's a bunch a real... that are, are out. Like, oops, I have my pants and 
I would say lots of iterations. I would it. say you're going to see. You know, oops, I hot my pants is obviously one that we 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 brew regularly, but we don't really have a um, a schedule in terms of oh, we we want to make sure that we brew this beer, then this beer. It's sort of like what you know. We we just take it. We take it month by month, and we're like, all right. We kind of project what our needs going to be. We want to make sure we've got a couple of you know your six to seven percent IPAs coming out. We've got one or two of your lower ABV IPAs coming out, and then we've got all of these doubles. That, and you know, three little birds. Of, yeah, and then, yeah, <laughs> three little birds, or who knows, maybe even a six. Oh, what? radio. I didn't hear that from me. Radio <laughs> plus infinity minus two plus seven. Plus seven and a half. Um, I love those, though, by the way. It just makes for just good conversation when you go, oh, which one do you have? I had like three minus two plus one yeah, equals seven. Yeah, infinity <laughs> my, well, that one was pretty funny. So yeah. we, uh, you know, we had infinity, infinity plus one was, uh, was a derivation of one. And, um, and we got a cease and desist. What? From oh. a brewery out in California. Um, how the fuck do they fuck beer advocate? I guess is where they hear about it, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Untab, beer, you yeah. know. Yeah. And it it's somebody, or any person on social media is like they're doing it. Go <laughs> do it. They're doing I know, it. I know what brewery it is. Should I say it or not? Yeah, it's, 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 we're not having California breweries on anytime soon. So, so yeah, go ahead. it was uh, Hess Brewing Company. Sure, Hess, everyone okay. knows Hess. Those motherfuckers. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> everyone on Long Island. It's like a family name. It's like, well, so I think it actually comes from the Hess family, like the gasoline. Really? Uh, oh, I, I, b- I believe so. I, th- I believe it. You know, it's one of his mm. sons and somebody who has money there. Okay. So he opened up a, a brewery out there. And next thing we know, we get a cease and desist. I'm sure not really from the guy himself who owns yeah. it, but from his lawyers or whatever. And um, so it's like you have to stop using, you know, using the name. And we're like, guys, we're in New York. We're this tiny little brewery here in New York. You're out there in California. And he was at the time a pretty small brewery. I think he's grown since then. But um, it's all know, the sales of like plastic like, trucks gonna, for Christmas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're so, putting your extra sticker on it, and you're like, "See, it's San City now." So then we're like, we're like, all right, you know what? Infinity minus one plus two. Do the math. Do the math. <laughs> What's it add up to? Huh? Anyone? Anyone? Uh, now, what? It, infinity it, plus one. It can't be that he's a math teacher or anything like that. <laughs> right, right. But he was like. like People is, are gonna understand what this means. Isn't it one with like a line? Wait, over? Do you guys, did you guys really not get that infinity to minus one plus two is infinity still plus one? Still, yeah, yeah. it's still the same yeah, thing. Right? You got it. Yeah, or maybe it's just infinity. Oh. Maybe right. because it is an infinite number That's of true. possibilities. Uh, I got really quick. I got craft uh, uh, not crap. Li poured a can of island drink for the family on Sunday. Everyone loved it. There you go. Awesome. Yeah. Glad to hear that. Well, that's what we do. I mean, that's I, I have a constant rotation of Sand City beers in my fridge when people come over. It's like you gotta try this. You know, yeah. you, 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 I mean, I mean, it's so out of your way. How do you? I, I know. I, mean, I go so I drive. I drove yeah, hours. Yeah, yeah. It's where my mom buys beer now. <laughs> <laughs> and she because they're still doing it. It's like oh, well, I, you know, yeah. This is what my sons drink now. I guess I should, you know, get some beer. I have some too, <laughs> Peter. I have three little birds, and I sounded like a cute name. I had three of them already. I'm Hammond. I had three already. Is that what that means? Oh, I didn't see 11.5 on the side. <laughs> is it? I forget what it is. It's like 10. It's 10.5, 11.5, somewhere in there? It's 10.5. 10, 10, yeah, 10.5, yeah. all right. Mm-hmm. Oh, it's a good one, though. It it's hides the one. heat so well. Mom goes and gets her session IPAs, and she's happy, or pale ales. <laughs> There you go. And dad gets drunk and, and, and angrily yells oh, no, at her all day. <laughs> God. Well, the, and yells at clouds. The best, the best is Handsome yells. Maniac because that's a beer. So it's a Belgian triple, 10% like 9%, alcohol. yeah. And um, that's the beer that just notoriously, like, the old ladies love. Um, <laughs> <laughs> like, you know, they come in, they're like, I re- that one I really like, that Handsome man. It's such a great name. And then they're like, all right. They come back three minutes later. They're like, "I'm gonna have another one of those." We're like, "No, you're not." Nope. <laughs> you know, um, you gotta cut them off. We have to. But uh, I mean, these but honestly, that happens with you know. We, we see that because it is such an approachable beer for ten yeah. percent. I mean, it's so drinkable. It's dry and it's you know, it's just got a lot of flavor to it. So we see that with a lot of the a lot of the women. They 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 flock to that. They like it. And you know, you, you're sitting here and you're like. All right, you got these hundred pound women. Like you got, you, you really have to watch it. And make sure that they're not. You know, I mean, from for the bartenders, you know, at least if they want to buy a case of beer, fine. Yeah, buy a case take it home, take it home, do whatever. But like, hard bartenders are like, you. oh my god, we gotta, you know, <laughs> oh gotta watch these people. So Long Island's checking in. I don't know if it's Greg or Sheila, but they're saying what's up. Long Island. Mm. What's up? 
going on, guys? Um, so you guys, uh, you know, now you have two places. How do you dictate Where's scheduling? Where's the third going? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, no, how do you dictate what the schedule is going to be? Oh, Are you guys, God, is that a hard, nightmare. yeah, is it? Fucking nightmare. Oh. Yeah. Because we got to get, you know. Is it we like you got to move grain. supplies to one? Are you, oh, yeah. Going, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh. We basically right now have a van going back and forth between the two spots, you know, at least twice a day. Really? Wow. Holy shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and, and that's just supplies? Just shipping kegs back and forth, kegs, shipping grain, cans, hops. Uh, you know, we try, to deli- we try to order, you know, um, grain, raw materials to both spots. But inevitably, it's, oh, shit, we're, we're short 10 bags of this. And we need a bag of that or whatever it is. Um, or yeah. we're, we're grabbing yeast from, you know, because we're, we're, we're harvesting the yeast over in Lindenhurst and we need it in Northport. So just a daily basis of like, all right, the logistics of moving mm, things around. Yeah. Uh, that in and of itself is a nightmare. And getting from point A to B, you know, from Lindenhurst to, to Northport is not like... It's not a straight shot. It's, yeah, <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's a, it's a 30 minute drive. It's yeah. not the end of the world, but it's, you know. You're it doing is. it twice a day. You know, you're really mm-hmm. taking up supply. Do you have a keg cleaner at both? or We do. Yeah, all right. So I was going to say that's another thing. You bring one down, clean it, bring it back. It'd be part of the. Well, we, but that's another thing that we're constantly doing is because, you know, we'll have kegs that we clean in Northport because either they're coming from the Northport tasting room or they get dropped off there, you know, picked up from a local, air, from right. a local restaurant and uh, brought to the Northport spot. So we're cleaning them, but then we need them to, you know, we're, we're emptying a 60-barrel tank in, <laughs> in Lindenhurst. It's like, shit, we need to go, you know, we need these kegs. So. Jesus. I can it's, imagine, like, your uh, your yeast cultures in an igloo cooler, like you're doing a uh, drop-off of a kidney. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Coming in, like, I got it, I got it. <laughs> All right, get it over, get it over, get it mm-hmm. going. Uh, you guys are still self-distributing, right? We are. Yeah. We are. And so we haven't been, uh, you know, I mean, obviously, it's not like we've been distributing, you know, that much beer. Um, even with the new spot, uh, because we sort of were just trying to see what our needs are between the two locations and all of that. Uh, but we did just bring a new a new uh, guy on who's heading up like our in house distribution, and um, to get out to like the uh, the beverage distributors, yeah, I guess, right? Yeah. So, and what's the goal? Are you trying to just kind of get it local to start? Are you going to go try to go I all mean, East Coast, and... Long Island? You know, yeah. We're, we're gonna, but but we're gonna really try to get it out there. On so hopefully soon we'll see it. Uh, we'll see it in a lot of different places. Some of the um, maybe home distributors on Long Island and stuff like mm. that, where. You know, we're really looking at one or two brands to kind of get to them and really only to them so right. that we won't even have those necessarily in the tasting well, we, room. Which ones are you looking have for? Have a little bit. What's that? Which brands? Which ones are you? Oops. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So. Um, and it's identifiable on a shelf, which makes yeah, sense. Yeah. And, you know, and again, to sort which, of just yeah. have that reciprocity with the with, with the home distributors, like, you know, we're, we're really just selling that through, through that, that channel so that for them, it helps them out because they know that. There's, people are going to go there to buy it, and then they'll drive traffic to us because they'll go, all right, well, what know, we've got mean? these ones, but you want to try their other stuff? Yeah, go to yeah. the brewery. And, you know, so um, so your local distribution just for, like, kegs and things like that, I've, I've seen stuff early, uh, before the pandemic popping up at the Villager. Mm-hmm. So you guys were doing, you know, oh, yeah. some some individual contracts with some restaurants and bars. Oh, yeah, no, no. We As of now, you know, we've got probably 100 different accounts that, wow, we, okay, right. that we do. You know, it's not... It's not regular, but, you know, a lot of those beer bars that are sort of doing rotational beers, you know, we're, we're out to those. And, then, and hopscotch as well, yeah. Mark yeah, and I would say, you know, 50 of them are regular. Where yeah. they're, they're, we're, we're, we've got a, a Croxley, line stuff there. like, yeah, yeah, someone there, yeah. You know, and oh, I mean, yeah, all yeah. of Northport and then, you know, a lot of Huntington. I mean, very local places, you know, yeah, that we've got a permanent handle there. And that's awesome. And, I, uh, I, I've seen as far as uh, Alaska, someone have your beer. <laughs> Um, on Instagram, just as part of the beer trade and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. So uh, that's why I was getting to before. It was just such a, a a strange thing. You got to see, you know, your beer sitting on a beach in, you know, like Puerto Rico, and you're like, well, really? I made it all the way there, yeah. and it wasn't one of your friends just tra- tra- putting in their suitcase and flying it over. It was people actually, you know, seeking out the beer. Um, have you found, you know, over these years that that kind of growing, or have you seen more uh, of just like a local presence? What what's been the overall kind of vibe of that, that that reach that you think you well have. I think in general the craft beer market has become much more localized where um, there's a, obviously the number of breweries I don't even know what it is anymore the number of craft breweries do you know what it is Steve uh, shit the last time I heard it was in on Long Island was close to 80 
Yeah, that's Long saying, Island. I'm talking that's you know, over Island. eighty thousand, over eight thousand. Yeah, I think yeah. probably right. I mean, well, nationwide, nationwide. Yes. I mean, it, I don't know it's if it's that high, side. but if it is, yeah, I wouldn't be surprised to hear that <laughs> it's, it's that high. It's close to six. In there. Really? Yeah. Wow. So, and and that's I like actually, you know, I th- yeah. I think it's great. I mean, you know, I don't feel threatened by it because I think I think that's what that's what craft beer is all about, right? You want to there's enough of the market. There's where enough you... of the market, and I mean, we're we're producing however much beer we're producing, and we're selling it. And we're selling it to the local market, and people are getting fresh beer. Yeah. So, um, you know, I think gone are the days where it's like, oh, you know, yeah, let's let's try to get our beer out to to California and Colorado and you know, for what all, all over the place because <laughs> there's so much good beer out there already. Yep. Yeah. And for us to distribute out there, like, think about what the what the consumer would have to pay too, right? And Just the what logistics we would have to of getting it and there. Then, and then now you're competing in a market where people don't know you. Yeah. Um, so, and I, you also don't want to see those prices increase because it does reflect your brewery. I, I, I've been noticing lately that some of the non-distributing places are popping up in some of the local distributors, mm-hmm. and it's because someone's going out and getting it and bringing it back, and then they're charging thirty, forty dollars a four pack, and it's like, is that really necessary? And at the same time, does that reflect the brewery? Because I do have something yeah. now. I go. Ah, well, I know what the process is. I know what the cost is. I know why yeah. it's there. But is that truly how the brewery wants to be represented too? No, and we yeah. don't. You know, I mean, we're you know when we do distribute our canes, uh, which we have not done at all yet, um, but we'll we'll price them so that so that it's on par with what we're charging at the brewery. Right. You know, I mean, we know that everybody's got to make their money. Obviously, I mean, that's the that's the way the world works. Um, but for us, you know, sure, we could go out there and be like, well, here you go. Here's but here's what we're charging. And people, you know, the distributors will buy it, but then they've got to mark it up to make yep. sure that they're getting their thing. So, you know, if you go in there and you're like, all right, here's a, you know, here's a four pack of Oops, I Hot My Pants for $28. It's, well, it's, it's going like, to sit there. Right. And it makes us look like a bunch of assholes, right? Because what are we charging to people? So, you know, we have to kind of appropriately price it to make sure that, you know, they can get their margins and still have it have it on par with what we're, we're charging. So at your end, is it, is it worth it for distribution then? Uh, is it not just about you know raising the visual of the brand, but is it worth it on a, a money scale to, to to do something like that? Can you make it at a a, a, a well, price? If you, can, if you can make it, if you have the capacity to make enough beer, I guess it's worth. Right. It, well, right? is it about quantity? Right. Is well, it about know, when it becomes a a volume game like that? Right. Mm-hmm. I mean, then obviously the you know your your margins start decreasing, but then with volume, you know, pennies add up to dollars, dollars add up to you know, millions, and that's the goal, right? Yes, <laughs> millions. Right, Steve? Excellent. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, all the millions. <laughs> One hundred <laughs> billion dollars. <laughs> um, but, but, I mean, in reality, like, no, I mean, selling, you know, selling kegs of beer around, you, I mean, Steve will be able to tell you as well as, as well as anyone else that, you know, you don't make money on, on, on that. Selling a keg to, to an account isn't really about making money. I mean, I don't. I don't see how you ever really could make money doing that, but um, but it's really especially when you have a, a brewery that you know sells a half keg mm-hmm. for like thirty seven dollars. Yeah. 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 Exactly. How you can't compete against that. Mm-hmm. Which, so now, which brewery is this? Budweiser. Oh. Oh. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought you meant like a craft Uncle brewery. Like, mm. No, but even you know no, even, you... even some of the craft breweries, yep. you know, you'd be surprised how 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 cheap their kegs are for people to buy. So, and yep. for them, is it is it about that's the actual cost, or is it about more like a marketing no, thing? Think, like I think for them, the name out. when I say a craft, brewery, they're they're a huge craft brewery who is maybe not trying to be the premier craft brewery, but they're just creating a product that they can they can sell for a decent price. Something like a Goose Island. Or those mid-range, you know, Sam Adams, Sam Adams, yeah, yeah. and um, you know, so. But I think it's more about just making sure that you're you're being represented by right. your local community, that people are hearing about you, seeing you, and also, you know, it, it's great to have that have that, um, you know, community and just that 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 relationship with these restaurants. It's a good thing you were a math teacher. <laughs> Quickly do all those calculations. Say, is it worth it? Is it not worth it? <laughs> easy, easy to figure out. But again, like, hmm. in volume, in volume, it, it you know, right. it makes sense. It's all about volume. Yeah, no, it is. It is. So, but oh, it wouldn't make sense, it, you know, for us when we were a really small brewery and you're producing, you know, X amount of beer, right? And then there's more of a demand for that than the amount of beer you can make. 
well, now how do you want to sell your beer? You want to sell it from, where you can make the most profit. Where you can make the most yeah. profit, at a, at a and then from the there you, you kind of go down. So obviously, you know, selling beer in your tasting room is where you make your money. I mean, that's where your that's basically where your your bread and butter is. Um, and then whether it, you know draft sales are number one, but then following that is going to be any beer to go, your growlers, your cans, um, anything you could just sell to go right. from the brewery direct is gonna is gonna be next merchandise merchandise sure and then the next step is well now you got to get out there to the market so where are you gonna make your money the you know set so you kind of have to kind of figure out what the best step is from there so like cans you know cans are cans are good cans and, are a good way of getting your beer out yeah. there. and it's a it's a double-edged sword if you're a smaller brewery that again has a and there's a quite a few of them on the island People don't know who they are, yeah. but they don't make enough to get out there to put in the bars where somebody could go, oh, who the hell is right. this? Where are they? Yeah. I want to go to their brewery. But if you only have that small amount, now you, you know it's that double-edged yeah. sword. You're like, oh, what do I do? Do I just sell out of my, my tasting room and make the most money from it? Mm-hmm. Or do I try to get it out there? Mm. And so more people Make a little less, it. right. And, and drive some know. drive some more feet to the, to the taste right. room. Right. From day one, I mean, we, we supplied all of the restaurants in Northport um, and tried to get a little bit further out of Northport. But we wanted to make sure that, you know, our presence was there no matter sure. what. Even if it was at the cost of a couple extra dollars, you know, in our pocket, uh, it made sense to us. Like, that was that was our way of marketing our product and and kind of just getting the community to, to follow us. It's almost like a means of advertising. It is. Yeah. Uh, and that's what you kind of chalk it up to, right? Mm-hmm. Um, I'm going to go dark on Instagram for a minute for all the... There's a bunch of people watching, actually. Uh, go over to GovsRadio.com or Facebook or YouTube to catch the full video and everything because we have a segment coming up that I'll tease for the Instagram people mm-hmm. uh, that Steve has some questions for Kevin. So I'm going to go dark on this, and I'll set that up in just a minute. Hmm. Hmm. So go ahead, oh, Stephen. Yeah. Ask, ask more questions. It, it, it always Prior questions. Cast. Prior questions. <laughs> um, you know what? Pre, I, I, pre-question. I, I actually, uh, how is it going with with the public works? The last time you and I spoke, there were certain issues uh, with, obviously, um, your discharge. And, mm-hmm. go, and I bring it up is because a lot of people... You know, I had heard over when you guys first started getting into the new spot. Mm-hmm. Oh, they're getting such a great break, and they're going to get this, and hey, it's still being handed to them. People oh, don't realize. No people don't realize behind the scenes that there's a lot of shit going on that you have to deal with. That is not easy, and it's you know it's a pain in the ass. Yeah, well, I mean, first of all, pretty much everything. <laughs> surrounding brewing beer is a pain in the ass. Right? Yeah. <laughs> um, Except for drinking it, unless yes, you're that guy yeah, that yeah, yeah. hopped his pants. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> but um, and he had a bad day. Just a bad day. Yeah, but one 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 big issue was uh, was our discharge. So um, Suffolk County they did not, uh, or, or they gave us our discharge permit, um, but with the exception in there that we had to put in an equalization tank that would be locked. So, um, and what does that mean? What does that do? That so, just... literally, what we're doing is we're storing our own wastewater until they come and check it. Ugh. And and let's say, and that goes for the bathrooms as well, or just no, just no, no, the no, brew no, house. No, no. We have, so we've got we basically have two uh, two drain lines going out. Okay. You know, how so, often do they check? And does that become a problem that they're not able to check it as often as you need them to? Well, so I mean, what happens is they've been—they've honestly been great. You know, I mean, the the, the workers there at Bergen Point because they're the ones oh, that Bergen we're dealing Point. with. Um, you know, they've been great and they're working with us the best they can. But this came from the top down, where they just said, um, you know, someone's got to go out there and check the pH levels, check the BOD levels, the TSS levels, and before anything is discharged those have to be checked and then they have the lock so they they literally have a valve that that's locked with a padlock and they won't let so it so then go. they unlock mm-hmm. it and we 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 discharge it out to the sewers yeah and you're only you're only or well, they are only allowing a certain amount of discharge to go through well i mean so we our our equalization tank holds 5000 gallons of water wow right? okay so this is all just our our brewery wastewater right mm-hmm. Um, and we pretty much, we have to empty it twice a week, hmm. you know, which is, it's a lot of water. It's not, it, 
it's not that bad as far as, you know, the, the actual amount of water, 10,000 gallons a week or so. I mean, you know, um, but so we've been we've been pretty efficient regarding like, you know, recapturing our water for reuse. We've got a hot and cold liquor tank so that we have to use less water to knock out and then we can catch it back into our hot tank. And I was going to say, is there a way to kind of reuse some of it? That a way, lot of yeah, it, yeah. But yeah. I mean, you're, you're cleaning wastewater. No, that's just got to yeah, go. Yeah, no, no. It's going to be original. You've this reminds worked. me, like, I have visions in my head of the guy in Ghostbusters that's hassling. <laughs> <laughs> Unlock it! <laughs> <laughs> just, just some dick. that run through your mind. Yeah, you know? yeah that was not going through my head. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> but, but now, Did you just watch Ghostbusters? But no. I but but now I can only think about the Stay Puft Marshmallow Man. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I got my segment popped up. You ready, Steven? All right, we got a little uh, preview, and then uh, Steve will be right back here for something. All right. Uh, hey, you cool hem cats. Tonight, we bring you a very special presentation. Three questions with our very own... Steve's questions. Three questions from Steve. Three questions. Steve's questions to go. Skip at school, boy. Should I add some skiddly ups? Yeah, do squiddly right, ups. I'm scared right now, by the way. <laughs> Crispy boy. <laughs> okay. As you should so, be. Three questions. I'm going to ask them one at a time because I used to actually ask them all three. And after the first one, you're like, what? Okay. And especially since we've been drinking, it's, you know. Can they be the same answer? Can uh, the same answer? No. Uh, <laughs> seven. I would hope they wouldn't some be. Some of but it would be, though. Some of it does could. end up du- doubling could. up a little yeah. bit. I'm um, not doing that, yeah. I've so, chosen my answer. Yeah. <laughs> then, so cheese. Just what, cheese. What was <laughs> that craft beer that turned you on to craft beer what was that one that you said what the fuck is going on here i, I gotta try more of this type of craft you know uh at the time you know you, it, it could be anything but is that one is that one beer that just kind of man hands <laughs> <laughs> no see now he's going to answer that well three times yeah, three <laughs> time. i told you i picked my smart, answer smart. Y- yada yada well yada <laughs> you know whatever let's go <laughs> Uh, you know, <laughs> somebody is on to me this time. <laughs> Normally, everybody's like, um, they turn me on to craft beer, or yeah. they turn me on to like this stuff. Because there's there's Just actually different levels of answers to that question, right? Mm, okay. Um, I would say craft beer, like really turn on to craft beer. I mean, there was the the Sam Adams days, sure. right? Mm-hmm. Um, and then it was like Stone IPA. Ah, mm-hmm. yes. You know, and that was what kind of first got me. Like, mm. what the hell is this? This is this is great. And then back in like 2011, I tasted um, Hetty Topper mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and a Hill Farmstead Abner. Oh, you know. See, I wouldn't have been able to get my hands on that. I wouldn't have even known about it back then. Yeah, well, um, like one of those things. Is... Somebody brought me like a four pack of Hetty Topper from, um, you know, from Vermont, yeah. and um, I cracked open one of those, and I was like, "What the fuck is this? It's amazing!" <laughs> you know. Yep. I mean, just a different, different. Type sorcery of beer, that's different. going on and then um then Must i was the up, i was up in burlington Vermont almost like Alton. on uh, yeah. on vacation and uh and i was in a place up there called like the farmhouse uh tap and grill or something like that up there in burlington vermont and they've got all craft beers on tap and they had uh hill farmstead i never heard of them before and uh the bartender just said oh these these guys are fucking amazing you gotta try some of their beer you know so i i, I had that and i was like it was like I was drinking liquid hops, you know. What I mean, <laughs> uh, and that blew, that probably blew me away more than Hetty Topper did. Hmm. And from that from then on, I was like, I gotta I gotta try to make beer like this. Like this is, you know, pretty amazing. So do they market Hetty Topper as a uh, a hazy IPA? No, not hazy, but just a New England IPA. He was like the OG of the yep. New England, so he was just like, I'm just making IPAs right yep. here in and Vermont, this is, and this, right, and right. then it's like, oh, that's what the New Englanders do. Look, let's follow because him. Because it's not hazy. It's not what you would consider it that used level, to be. But yeah, yeah. yeah it feels a lot more focal banger is more hazy. Yeah, than yeah. yeah. correct. Yeah, I, I do have to. I love their, you know, wh- whoever thought of the idea of 
on the can having drink from the drink, can. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Because when you would pour that into a glass, you went, what, what is all this? It looks like shit. This <laughs> particulate that's yeah. in here, there are leaves, yeah. there are all <laughs> leaves. There are all sorts of shit floating around in there. But if you don't see it, eh. it tastes fine. And you and yeah, it, it was one of those beers that, you know, everybody, they were the OG of yeah. that style. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Uh, what is your favorite style? Man hands. <laughs> <laughs> Somehow I saw that coming. <laughs> fucking guy. This fucking guy. This right guy. Here. <laughs> uh, oh, my boy. favorite style? Yeah. That's like saying who's your Black favorite IPA. kid. Black IPA. Black <laughs> IPA. We all have a favorite uh, kid. You know you have a favorite kid. <laughs> I mean, we just can't say it out loud. <laughs> oh, God. Favorite style? I mean, it, it, it kind of it comes and goes. You know, it's like a roller coaster. Um, right now, you no, know, I'm just loving lagers. There we go. You know, a nice, clean, crisp. Very you know, brewer-esque go. answer, mm-hmm. that's for sure. Mm-hmm. But it is we get, good. A, we get a lot of that. We get a lot of lagers. We get a lot of lagers. <sighs> because it's, it's, it is like the brewer's beer, you know? You're, yep. just, you're around beer so much. We're tasting, you know, and I mean, all these great styles and all these great beers. But It's but the constant yeah. in, in all, the, all the trendy, you know, like yeah, sours, yeah, yeah. pastry stouts, yeah, you know, just, haze craze. Like. You know, because we're, we're around them all the time and we're tasting them all the time. I mean, we have to. We've got to make sure that, you know, we're tasting them from tank to tank yep. um, as soon as everything goes on tap. And then it's like at the end of the day, you're like, well, what do you want to drink? I'm like, Give me, pour me a Pilsner. Yeah. You know? Mm. So Speaking of which. Pouring you guys a Pilsner? Mm-hmm. Yeah, pouring a Pilsner. What, uh, if you go out to dinner, what would be that one beer be- other than what you brew, what would be that one beer? And if he fucking says man hands. <laughs> uh, I was hoping you'd forget. Do it. <laughs> Do it. What would be that one beer that you would like to have that, you, you know, you would, you, you would look for? That I, a, a particular brand that I'm looking for? Yeah. A particular style? or Sure. Yeah. Sure. All of that. Yeah. Um, Knowing, like, you know, anywhere you go, you could probably get it. Or... Um, knowing that the place you're going has it. You know, I mean, a Belgian-style beer, I think. You know, may, maybe like <laughs> a, you know, a, a Belgian blonde, a Belgian white. Oh, I mean, like Allagash white or Allagash something like that. white, absolutely. Mm. Mm-hmm. Uh, when I see that on tap, I usually get one of those. Yeah. Um, and then, uh, yeah, but like a, a Belgian triple on tap is always mm. nice when you see something like that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. triple. Mm-hmm. I'm still sitting I'm on my uh, my St. James double. I'm sitting on the one you got me for my birthday. Or is it the triple? <laughs> I get, no, I got you the double. the double. I got me the triple. Oh. Yeah. Because they I'll also pair nice with food a lot of times. Oh, yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. A little so, crudite on a nice... Yeah. It's not something you want to like down like 17 of. No, no, no. no, no. But no like, you're sipping on that. That's absolutely. a nice... Yeah. I love that. That's a treat. Yeah. <laughs> it's a little treat for daddy. Yeah. Mow the lawn. The thing too with, as you know, anytime you have a nice Pilsner and it's done well... It's probably one of the most refreshing beers. Mm. It hits all the notes. Oh, shit. Oh. This is terrific, by the way. Thank you. Yeah. This is the world of Mike, Pete, and Steve. Who's on the phone? Mike made me call. <laughs> Joe? Joe? Hi, guys. Hey. Hi, Joe. Joey. Hi, Joe. Are you still uh, at San City? I was not at San City. I was saying... Pete's dog attacked Hazel at San City. Yeah. Oh. yeah, I'm sorry my dog's a dick. Yeah, your dog was a dick. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Good, good yeah. thing you're nice. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What 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 exactly uh ah, and, they and, tried to sniff each other and then I don't know, he fucking doesn't like went anybody that right. doesn't reside in his fucking house anymore. I don't know. Joe, I'm sorry I didn't get to you earlier today. I, it kind of was not a second thought, but I was so busy uh drinking at Blue Point last night with Zane Lamprey. I totally forgot to invite you. I had it on my mind. And we saw uh, Dave from Dave's Cold, Cold Beer <laughs> and Soda. <laughs> And I was like, oh, I got to talk to Joe. I got it. And then I just slipped my mind. So sorry I didn't get to you. Whatever, Jerk. You hurt my feelings. <laughs> <laughs> I'll make no, it up to you. I'll and, come, and not I'll come for nothing, some you actually brought that up to me yesterday. I did. I You're said, like, you know, I think I'm going to call Joe. I got to call Joe down. and let him know. And I, it slipped my mind until this morning when my hangover finally cured up. And I was like, all right. Uh, what, what, what time was that? Uh, like 10.30 a.m. Oh, okay, that was yeah. by me, too. Yeah. Yeah. It was when I had lunch. 8.02 <laughs> if, p.m. Yeah. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Just before the show started. Beer. <laughs> some, <laughs> some life you live, huh? 10.30 in the morning? Well, I was in the middle of class. You, you're lucky. You had, to see me, you had to see me teach my first period. <laughs> Try to get through that in the morning. Oh, boy. What are you up to tonight? Uh, just 
watching Homestead Rescue with my dog. <laughs> okay. All right. Exciting life we lead as HGTV's the... HGTV has really jumped the shark, hasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Joe, why, why I asked you to call in because I want you to weigh in on this. Uh, so you were, you were established in Lindenhurst uh, prior to Sand City coming in. Have you seen a major difference in the town, in, in the vibe uh, since Sand City has been there? Uh, I think so. It's, it's, it's just another location. It's another cool place for people to bounce around town with. So, I mean, during the summer, I feel like we've seen a lot of foot traffic. Yep. And it's given people another place to, like, go. Like, people will park in a parking lot and just literally walk around town and hit multiple places. Yep. And you see, you see that sharing of, of, you know, like, the businesses in town getting along and things like that? Yeah. We all seem to get along. Yeah. Um, I mean, we have a permanent line at Sand City. We carry a, a rotating Sand City can. <laughs> Depending on I how mean, this so phone like, call everyone goes. Everyone supports each other. Like, no one looks at each other as a competition. Yeah. We're no, just trying to great. build this area up. And you guys were carrying Oops, I Lindy My Pants, right? Yes. Now we have Lin- now we have Lindy Lager. Yes. Yay. Mm-hmm. Which I do like Lindy Lager. Lindy Lager is great. Because I, I want to drink that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> how, many, how many goddamn people order that at the tasting room? A shit ton, don't they? Lindy, Lindy Lager. Lager. Lindy Lager? Yeah. Order it? Yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah. We can't keep, like, we're out of Lager and Pilsner on tap. We've still got cans of it. But, uh, yeah, I mean, we, we did, you know... I mean, the Pilsner, we we did a 60-barrel batch of that, you know, maybe a month ago. All gone. And wow. it's, all, it's all draft sales in the, the, the tasting rooms. That's great. You know? And, Joe, how, how often are you at Sand City? Every day. Uh, <laughs> I, think every, honestly, I think every time I've been there, I've run into yeah. Joe. <laughs> uh, or at least I see him I walking. Pro- I probably set foot in that building six times a week. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I walk my dog. Like, if we're opening up, I walk my dog, I pop in to say hi. He does. Yeah. Know, they're open later than we are, too. So when I close, I mean, that's where I go to get a beer. And that's... <laughs> <laughs> I always love to, uh, to have a place after bartending for all night, to have a place to go to where it's industry people. Uh, when I was at the Meatball Place, we all go to Dark Horse, or when we were in um, uh, over in Bethpage, then we'd run over into Hicksville, and there was a place over there. Uh, that's what Sand City seems to be for all the, the people that are working in the, in the town after hours. You know, Sand City's open a little later than most other places, so everyone kind of stops in there, right? Yeah. So I'm lucky that I mean sometimes we'll have like one or two regulars left. I'm like, guys, get the hell out of here. <laughs> <laughs> I need a fucking beer. Get out I'll, of here. I'll, I'll buy you a beer, Sand City, <laughs> if you come over there with me now because I don't want to be. <laughs> You'd be surprised how many times that happens. <laughs> with like with, with like one or two people left in the taste room because we all we all kind of share a lot of the same regulars, so I could do that. And they're all drinking Lindy Lager, and you're like, can we just go have this over there so I can get other stuff? And the, the thing about that is, I can see him doing this, too. Yeah. I'm like, just get the fuck out. We're going to Sand City now. Yeah. Just, just look, get out. Look at his yeah. Google reviews. I'm like, give me, give me. <laughs> <laughs> right here. The owner I, told me I, to get the fuck out because he wanted a beer. But he, but he bought me a beer, so. If we, all, if we all leave now, I'll buy the first round. Yeah. There you go. He's like, but he bought me a beer, so I give him a five stars. Five stars. <laughs> <laughs> Joe, uh, I, I only did. I only do it with certain people. I don't. Uh, if there are people I don't know, I don't do it. Yeah, it's it's tough. You don't want to really scare them, but at the same time, you you need a beer. Unlike that that woman that night that sat at the bar and asked you a million questions of what oh, what what, God. what I, yeah you were there for that. Lady. I was bro. That was so just. I felt for you because you were just like this. Just go, get the hell out of here. <laughs> she asked it's, it's, every question. About mead? Like, about mead, about what flavors. He's got a list. This is what this is what it is. What's good? Oh, what's the, like it was It was yeah, it was hard. I, well, edu- I know it's an education, you know, thing part of the mead, but when Steve is giving me weird faces, <laughs> like what the fuck is going on? Like it, it was above it was like above and beyond. Yeah. Do you do that do you do that to Adam when you're there and they're like, asking Adam questions about the beer? Oh, he just walks away from people. <laughs> I don't know. I hate. I hate beer. <laughs> I hate beer. It's, 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 it's disgusting. It's better off if Adam doesn't talk to people. Yes. Yes. <laughs> just just clean up, pick up the glasses, and and just 
He does a great job, by the way. Just I love seeing fantastic. him walking around. I go, oh no, he, he his, cra- his uh, thing is how many pine glasses? How many pine glasses he can stack? He I, I've seen him with like twenty. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's a hell of a job. Mm-hmm. Joe, uh, and, so, and, and his jorts are always really nice. His yes. jorts. <laughs> <laughs> he got a really nice haircut re- recently, too. Did he? Yeah. You would he, never know that. He's always wearing a hat. He's always wearing a hat. Yeah. yeah. He he got, he got, did he get he, the Joe, like, side He got it. Oh, yeah. He got it all, like, shaved on the side. And, yeah. and Pete, Pete wow. like, oh, yeah, come down and look at Adam's stupid haircut. <laughs> so he's like, fuck <laughs> you, then. I'm wearing a hat. I'm, fuck you guys. <laughs> and that's another thing, Joe. You got more businesses opening in town. Uh, have you noticed the pickup in, you know, foot traffic and things within what's going on in Lindenhurst? A ton. There's yeah. a ton more people coming to town. Um, people are kind of getting over Babylon and be like, we're going to go here instead. Because we have so many cool places now. You know, things that don't really exist. Yeah. We have, I a mean, meadery, the only a meadery we have. <laughs> they don't have that. They don't have any we breweries have, or meaderies or anything. Does Babylon have a meadery? Nope. Nope. They, nope. Do, uh, they do not. We have two breweries, but we also have like, like cool restaurants. We have Bakudo, like the Japanese Izakaya. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, like that. There's not many of them around. Herman is like small plate Latin, like killer food. It's awesome. like a lot of cool places to hang out. I, I'm waiting for more uh, restaurants because I I think that there's still a lot more market to be had. Like I was mentioning to Kevin before, the bank across the street from Sand City. That really needs to be a nice restaurant. You know what Lindenhurst needs? Yeah. Another pizza yeah, place. Yeah, the problem the problem <laughs> is the street. What's that, Being Joe? a nice, like, higher-end restaurant. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You, you can't put 200 seats in there because where are you going to park people? I know there's that municipal lot in the back, but, like, parking will, will become an issue if that becomes a 200-seat well, restaurant. That's the argument we were making before with the wall bounds over there. Why haven't they even decided to develop that, put a little piece of that for parking for the town or the village, rather? They can't. The village... So, the thing is with the with the wall bounds, the village can't do anything about that. The guy who owns it, who owns that property, wants an astronomical amount of money, like more Define than the village can ever pay for something. Yeah, one billion. <laughs> Define astronomical. Do you know the Do you know the number? Just out I, of curiosity, I, I heard upwards of eight or nine million dollars. Seems property. reasonable. Yeah, it doesn't but, seem unreasonable. But at the same time, Joe, it, isn't piece. he just sitting on it and paying taxes on something that's not making him any money? He's probably like, taking it as a fucking write off on his taxes. I guarantee he's a tax write off. Yeah. yeah. I yeah. guarantee yeah. he's losing money and making it a tax write off. Mm. That's and if sad. I had to make an educated guess on it, which I know nothing, and people seem to think I know a lot of stuff. That I don't. <laughs> so then it's not an educated <laughs> guess, yeah. my friend. Yeah. <laughs> you just said it's you know what so I'm glad you guess. said it and not me. <laughs> so pure speculation. So a guess. No. <laughs> <laughs> so a guess. I would think that once the well fills up. He's going to put in a plan to make that some more apartments. Yeah. Uh, that's what I was saying. I, I, I see that right for apartments on the other side. And, mm-hmm. and if they strike a good deal, there could be some municipal parking for the village. There could be something yeah, there. But, There's enough room. Yeah. There's, I mean, there's plenty of room there, but, I mean, I don't know. Like, that place would be awesome. That space would be awesome for so many things. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And but, the well has its own parking lot. Do they regulate that? Is there is there a, a like a, a booth or something like that when you're driving on their campus? There's not. There's right. not a booth there. Mm. See, what somebody needs to do is buy this thing, yeah. put a three-story parking garage, and charge like you do yeah. everywhere else. Yeah. You know, yeah. for mm-hmm. so many hours, it's this amount. And if it's overnight, it's mm-hmm. fucking... All automated, all, yep. all set. Yep. I know. I've yep. said parking yep. garage before, and, and people are like, oh, it's a parking garage, and it's... But there's no like real residential area back there, so to do that really wouldn't disturb anything. And you're right by yeah, the train station, yeah, so and, and there are like an oil. Uh, well, yeah, there's like mm-hmm. other buildings that are just commercial. Yeah. next to it. So yeah. I don't know, Joe. I, I wh- what would you do if you were the city planner and I gave you the keys to the kingdom? What would you end up doing over there? Over there, build a Honestly, big meadery. If, if, if <laughs> Make yeah. mead. Yeah. If it was my money and I could afford to come there, I would put a supermarket there. The village doesn't have a supermarket. The well, they did until that the one that was there closed. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But there's, there's stop and shop in West Babylon, and then there's like King yeah. Cullen, Aldi, and Lidl, could, and different. It's like not a, a nice. Well, there's supermarket. King Cullen there. north of Sunrise. Yeah, yeah. but that's yeah. a that's a bit yeah. of a trek too. There's sure. not there's nothing close. Think of like a like a meat farms or something like that, even though they don't exist well, anymore. I think it's too big like, for like, like, for like, like that it is. It's a big location. Yeah, yeah. the wall bounds in there was huge, huge. and they were subletting space yeah. out to huge. other retailers. Oh, so. were they? Yeah, like you know, like 
like busy bee kind of you know like a, oh, there was yeah. like a jeweler and like a fucking shoe eyeglass place. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, yeah. yeah, I yeah it so. might be too big I, for for the supermarket that like, they would need there. Lidl or yeah. or Aldi or you know uh, yeah, Johnson's half, I know, isn't going to. Yeah. Too I know they have reached out and tried to get guys like Whole Foods or like like Trader it's Joe's. Too big for Whole Foods. But a lot so. of yeah. times those guys work off of um like medium like income in the area yeah. and i don't think the yeah. area hits some of those yep. some of those markets and yep. they just opened a whole foods in mass yep. yep so it's pretty close yeah to, yeah that mm-hmm. opens up like that, yeah that, that was right. opening yeah. october 6th yeah, yeah. i just oh. sold me to them last week fucking <laughs> guy <laughs> 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 Fucking man. Everybody, <laughs> everybody <laughs> thinks I know. I know You're giving us dates, brother. <laughs> like, It'd be at eight o'clock a.m. So what, what, what meat? Are, what meat is going to be available at Whole Foods on Wednesday, Joe? Uh, <laughs> rescue and Spritzo. <laughs> yeah. Spritzo, I love that one. That, yeah. that, I mean, and out of the that wasn't meant to be a plug. That was just meant to be like, hey, it's opening October six. Well, hey, yeah, yeah, why not? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Spritzo's yeah, delicious. Yeah, I, I honestly didn't even think about it that way. I literally thought about it as, hey. I know for fact opening October sixth. <laughs> but I dropped it off. But more importantly, Joey, did you have the uh, Montauk pumpkin yet? <laughs> oh, oh, so we're gonna start we're gonna this route? <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna be like that now, isn't it? I, I had to go to Joe. I'm yeah. sorry, I had to, brother. I know I, 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 I know I to get your own round. Mostly have not. Yeah. Well that's that's for the best. Speaking of which we're gonna drink I, some no. Oktoberfest. <laughs> Joe, what'd you but think I did, about? But I did have the I did have the Sand City pumpkin. Yes, the graveyard. So. Uh, and that's one that I don't have any qualms of admitting to having. Can I just drink this one all by myself? No, get to get a oh, shit. Have, you actually <laughs> can if you want. <laughs> he's got, he's got, he's got no, he's kidding. <laughs> Joe, uh, what do you think about the Oktoberfest <laughs> from Sand City? <laughs> Avon wins. I like it. Yeah, I like it. I drink everything. I fucking love it. It's all good. Yeah, it is. All right, I'm gonna let you go. We're gonna finish up with Kevin here. I appreciate you calling in, buddy. All right, have a good night, guys. Enjoy. Joey, later, buddy. Cheers, Cheers. Joe. Joe Abruzzo, WME works in Lindenhurst, uh, sharing the town with uh, Kevin from San City South. It's a great space, as we said. Uh, great neighbor, too. I feel like the Lindenhurst Chamber of Commerce should be promoting our show now. <laughs> 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 How much Lindenhurst talk we do uh, on an almost a you know monthly basis from the breweries that we have in. We always compare everyone to our town now because oh, it's, yes. it's up and coming and you know great stuff is happening. The uh, only we, thing I wish... yeah. For somebody that's out west, that the fucking train station was just a little closer. The stop was just a little, mm. it's a little bit of a walk, but I mean. To wait, fucking what? How, how, how can it be closer? To Sand City. It's the actual it's station 600 feet. all the way down the block. Yeah, really? It's, it's across by the well. It's right there. So? So it's a little bit of a walk. Uh, that's nothing. When it gets a little cold out, you know. Well. I'm old. While I, I <laughs> Steve, I agree. I wish it was right across the street. Oh my god! I mean, we're in a lot better spots than than most breweries are regarding, tra- to the <laughs> regarding where the train station is. <laughs> you know, you're like, oh man, the yeah, the the train station's like. Kevin's a lot closer to his train station than away. Great South Bay is. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Or or than in Northport we are to our train station. Yeah. Oh my god, it's like a. Three miles. Unless they <laughs> resurrected you know? the trolley that right. went up Main Street. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Ocean is probably yeah. the only one that has anywhere near as close to. Yeah. yeah. Right? But yeah, I think the beautiful much. part about that is yeah, the train. there's a train station that stops in mm. town. I mean, yeah, you got to walk a block, know. like 20 <laughs> yards. It's really not that far. If you get, get the- on the fucking train <laughs> and I want to hear how your fat ass was hurt going down the street. Okay. No okay. way. Okay. He's right. You know, last week I I took the um, I got on the the train to go to uh to Jamaica because I was I was flying out of uh, Kennedy, mm. and so I had my bags with me at work because I had a, a later flight in the day, you know, and I'm like, shit, I gotta leave myself four minutes to get to the train <laughs> station right now. You know, that's a whole beer if necessary. <laughs> it was terrible. It was terrible. I thought it was gonna be like two minutes. It was four. It was <laughs> See. Six. Yes. <laughs> that fucking extra two uh, minutes. I grew up in Amityville. The Amityville train station, you could walk to uh, Smallcraft, but that's a good 20-minute walk. Mm. Yeah. Going all the way down Ketchum or whatever. That's not County Line. Ketchum. And then uh, if you look at uh, where Root and Branch is going to be, that's further because they have to go uh, a lot more, like a block or two west to get off the Copeg line. Mm-hmm. Um, then you said Motion, which was another one on the stop. I mean, it really starts to become, though, if you have a day... You can make oh there actually, and there's also plenty of bars. Actually, you can you know, for right. sure do a fucking bar crawl on it. I, I think yeah. uh, didn't South Shore 
It's the probably LAWR to, has, sponsored something like that, right? They did. They yeah. did uh, actually. Yeah, it was Sand, Sand City, City and uh, Twenty Seven A. No, it was Sand oh, City, Great South Bay, and somebody so else. Patchog. Yeah, the Long Island Railroad did that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah and they, so they had a shuttle that left the train station, dropped you down, yep. brought you back. <laughs> That's a cool concept. That's, but in in my concept, you don't even need a shuttle. You can technically walk to each one easily. Start in uh, Babylon, maybe get like a pre journey drink, I guess if you want to call it that, and then go to Lindenhurst. Amityville, okay, Lindenhurst, Copeg, Amityville, and then Massapequa Park, and that's pretty much everything. So in that actually, line. if you go on the um, Long Beach line, mm-hmm. you can get off. You can go over to South Shore. Mm-hmm. You could go to Long Beach mm-hmm. and Barrier, and then get on. Yeah, Barrier's. Yeah, I guess yeah, Barrier because there's, there's the tracks there, but the tracks are there. But I don't but, know. Where yeah, the yeah, station's a little far away. And then get to Long Beach and get off, <laughs> walk across the street, and go to Bright Eye. Mm. Oh, that's true. Yeah, you could. Yeah. That's not a bad one either. They should really do some sort of promotion with LA Double yeah. R to have that as a thing. You have one ticket. You know you're getting your stops. You do the total cost to collaborate with the breweries. It's not bad. It's not a bad I, idea. I actually was talking with someone, and they were like, hey, what do you think about putting a brewery in over at the... In the train yard? No. <laughs> well, yeah. yeah. No, the, the New Islanders Stadium. Oh, UBS, yeah. Uh, USB? Yeah, UBS. UBS. Yeah. Yeah, it's a good idea as a satellite, especially if you're a, a brewery that has a farm license, which I assume you do, right? Mm-hmm. And you're able to do that. Yeah. That Have you ever thought of opening Sand City West, Kevin? <laughs> 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 yeah, if you, I'm just saying, it's not a bad question. What If you actually had to choose, what would be the little areas you would look at? I mean, you're looking for like the, the triangle, quadrant. I mean, what would you be thinking about? Staying on the South Shore or just going mid, mid-island mid west? Well, we're talking like... Other Long Island locations, or yeah. just yeah, yeah. Elmont's on Long Island. <laughs> yeah, Elmont. <laughs> where did you just pull that out of? That's Elmont. technically where it is. That's yeah, it's in Elmont. Elmont. Yeah, it's literally um, like right on the borderline. Yeah. Just it's Nassau County. Yeah. Would it be a thing? Did Sand it, City I mean, West I, sounds better than other half East. It does. <laughs> <laughs> I like, I like, I, I'm on board for that. Yeah, I'm on board for that. That's not bad. But, I mean, there's a lot of great locations. You know, I mean, you got like the Huntington area, which is good. Then you want to go out east, like oh, you know, I mean, out there, there's a lot of lot of the breweries out there on the north on the North Fork. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, those are those it's are a awesome. fucking gold mine too. Oh like God. people going out there, like, well, I don't want to drink fucking wine all day, but no. I'll hang out at Jamesport Brewery. My brother was at Long Island Farm Brewery yesterday. Yeah, yeah. my it's my. Like, my daughters were saying that's like all their friends are like, got to go to Long Island Farm Brewery. Yeah, because like, it's new. How did that, right, yeah, how did just because it's yeah, but it's all so because it's awesome it. out there. Like yeah, you go out there and you know, open, I mean, it's big. You yeah, walk around. It's, it's an experience. Yeah. You know, I mean, you're 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 in the farmlands. You're pretty you're, good. Spot is cool. That was the review of Long Island Farm Brewery. <laughs> 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 pretty good. Farm. Spot is cool. Spot is cool. <laughs> I like that's it. it. I mean, you, you're talking about a satellite location. Yeah, just go to a cool spot. Yeah, right. People are gonna come and drink your beer. South Fork doesn't have anything, right? I mean, West West Hampton, and then that's it. You, you got West Hampton, anything. and then you're out to Montauk. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. So something in between, maybe like a especially for a satellite location where you don't actually have because you know the problem there is was the need to get a small storefront, and, right? You know, right. And I know um, West Hampton. You know, they ran into. A lot of problems. Yeah, I imagine there's a lot of NIMBY uh, issues. They run into. Well, that's why they ended up at the airport because that was the only place mm-hmm. that had the, uh, at least a sewer well, line that, that Breeze could tried to open up out there. Did they really? And they had a huge opposition that from the people from the residents of the Hamptons. You're yeah. kidding. Yeah. <laughs> and all they wanted to do it. was they wanted <laughs> to put, they wanted, they didn't even want to put a tasting room. They just wanted a, pr- like a production, yeah. no, a production really? facility because then it could ship, it's cheaper to ship all around Long you know, Island. Long Island instead of coming from, you know, you're all the way in Brooklyn and, mm. and going out east and, and yeah, no, they got shot down like several, several times. Now, what are they hmm. doing out of Huntington? It's just a storefront, right? They're not brewing, they're not doing anything. But- Actually, you told us they technically don't even own it, right? They don't own it. Yeah. Huh. It's actually one of their employees opened up the storefront. It's like a b- bottle shop, but yet it's just Because they don't even, they don't just sell threes. No, because they don't. Yeah. Bro, yeah. I brought, got our beer I brought, I brought yeah. fucking Bigfoot there <laughs> yeah. from Sierra Nevada. Wow. Uh, no, the. It's a cool the, spot. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it actually is. Yeah. And, and the other thing, you know, he has. 
cappuccinos, espressos. So if you're, really? yeah, if you're hanging out and you know, the well, that's person, not beer at all. <laughs> no, <it's not. laughs> wait a second here. <laughs> hey now, what kind of license seems do I need for that? A little funny. <laughs> <laughs> Just some corner. But yeah, he he's uh, he's, he's, he's an employee. Here. Decided to open up. He moved out that way, and uh, he gets like whatever they they put out. He, mm. He's just he's like the first guy to get it, huh? Makes and sense. Uh, a, lot, a lot of people weird that it. they call it Threes of Huntington. And actually, one of your employees also works there. Yes, Sours and Sass, right? Yep. Sours and Sass, N- Nikki, Nikki. Oh yeah, that's yeah, it. sure, sure. Well, yeah. then again, she works fucking everywhere. <laughs> right, right, right. She's at <laughs> Hopscotch. I mean, she was. She really is. She's yeah, the, yeah, the yeah, girl. She is a hustler and a half. Yes, yeah, she is. She's awesome. Get that money. Um, but yeah, yeah, they. You know, it's it's, it's not a satellite, but yeah, it's technically not. Guy's, guy calls it Three's Brewing. Uh-huh. And, uh, they got the awning labeled yeah, as it. It's yeah. interesting. Curious. Really can't call it a brewery, though, right? Well, it's not a brewery. No. It's, it's a bottle shop. Yeah. I'll yeah. tell you but what, they do though, have... what's pretty awesome is, like, you go to all the restaurants over there, they've all got Three's on tap. Yeah. You know, mm. so it's 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 a good idea. It's in- no infiltrated what. Right, every even bit if, of it. Even if it's not owned by Three's. Like, uh, you know, <laughs> yeah. They've got all the brand exposure without... Right, right. <laughs> yeah, you want to open this without up? without ahead. any of the capital investment yeah. or risk? Go ahead. We'll just we'll just rake in the yeah. money for, you know. Kev, I want I want to talk um, a little bit about what what the future holds. I mean, this is a relatively new brewery in Lindenhurst, though you've been there for what ten months. Uh, we opened in in March. March. Okay, so I can do my math. Four plus it's a six months, seven months. Yeah, seven months. Yeah, all right. Um, so I mean, obviously, I, I see more things that you need to be done what are we looking at for the future what, what's the next kind of step plan for the expansion or moving forward or whatever else you're going to do besides the distribution that we were talking about earlier yeah so in terms of like the infrastructure or in terms of both yeah i mean in, in yeah, all I, aspects i mean um we just finally got a depalatizer in there so you know, ah we can, i remember uh, when we were talking about that you're like ah, <laughs> oh, do we get it yeah. it's this price but you can fucking move it around and i know i know and uh i mean we we really just got it um up and running last week for the first time oh shit so uh it's got you know there's a, uh, still a few things we need to a few kinks we need to iron out a depalletizer what is it? it takes cans off yeah. a pallet and puts them on the canning line yeah, so essentially what, you know, what it does, that's exactly what it does. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, so what it does. <laughs> no, Pete, you're way off. Like, what it, what it really does, it, it, it takes a pallet of cans and it just loads them. <laughs> <laughs> what are you even fucking thinking? <laughs> Wait, does, does, And you got all that from Deep Palette? Yeah, that's crazy. <laughs> that guy's smart. No, I was thinking, like, what else could you put on? Like, it wouldn't fucking take out pallets of grain. Like, that's right. fucking dumb. No, <laughs> you no. pelletize it. <laughs> that would be amazing, right? Yeah, it just depalletizes anything you want. <laughs> You're like, here you go. We got a pallet of kegs. Whatever you put on there, like, <laughs> them right off. Cleans the kegs for you, fills them. Fills AI them has really improved itself <laughs> over the last few years. Jesus. No, but so so what it's done for us, I mean, it's just a lot uh, lot less manual work, and um, it's it's just cleaner, simpler, and we could... Freeze, we could ru- freeze that employee up to do something else. Right, right. True. And, yeah, no. And the time it takes for them to constantly be one by yeah, one I mean, it's loading. Not like, I mean, we still need the same amount of employees working the, the line, but it um, it speeds up the, the canning line itself, and just the whole process mm. is cleaner. So, um, you know, it's it, it's a, it, it was a smart investment. The uh, the one that I, I, I believe I've seen, uh, Oyster Bay has one, correct? Yeah, right. It's that lift. It kind of looks yep, like you yeah, put yeah. it underneath it, yep. lifts it, pulls it out, and kind of distributes the cans where it needs to go for the canning yep. line. Um. So, like moving forward from that, I mean that seems simple to most, but that's yeah. that's something that's important to a brewery if you're especially going to do canning and you're going to do distribution like you are. Mm-hmm. Um, is there is there something even further than that on the horizon? Like, what are you looking at for distribution? Start local and move forward. Is there a plan for that? Yeah, I mean um, the plan is exactly that. We're going to start local, and then we want to we we want to hopefully soon start branching out into the city. You know, Brooklyn, Queens, yeah. Manhattan. Um, Sand City West. <laughs> once, we, yeah, once we open Sand City West. Yeah. Uh, I was looking at the San map. City There's Brooklyn. some very big holes in the old uh, uh, Brewers um, Think New, New York, York, New York Bre- app. Yeah. yeah. And I'm like, wow, there's nothing in that area. Hmm, yeah. it's ripe for something to open up. But there's up. probably a reason. Yeah. Because <laughs> you're Industrial like, oh, this would be a great idea to open. And then the town's like, 
Fuck no. No, no <laughs> we're not welcome. We here. do not need any of that. So, um, yeah, there's usually a reason for those sort of things. Well, I mean, if you're looking at Western Nassau, right, it's probably about cost. That's first and foremost. It's just astronomical taxes that are involved. When you're yeah. looking at, uh, you know, let's say Eastern Queens, mm-hmm. um, there's a lot of good play. Like Fresh Meadows is a decent area. Queens Village, if you go up a little further north, we know that uh, yeah. M- Mickler uh, basically is gone now. So there's some sort of area there that could be uh, at City Field that yeah. basically needs a whole field. And there's nothing around that area. So that, that eastern northern Queens area is just nothing. And there's definitely some nice areas up there. That, Why can't I think of the brewery that's in Sunnyside? Uh, Why can't it? Um, but, 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 uh, five boroughs? No. Um, nope. uh, fifth Hammer, no. Um, nope. it's, it's, it, yeah, I'm thinking uh, five. <laughs> Single cut. Nope. No. no? Irish okay. gentleman is the proprietor. Oh, uh, Elwife. Oh, Thank Elwife, you. yes. Oh, oh, Patrick from Elwife. Patrick. Oh, that's right. All right. Patrick Donna. But even so, that's, that's further west, though, from any of yeah. the things I was looking mm-hmm. at. It's just a giant yeah. hole in the area. Yeah, back, too. And yeah, you know. yeah. And they opened up a second location, yeah, too. Yeah, they're, they're in Brooklyn now, too. Yeah. Which is crazy. I mean, that's what I'm saying. Like, these guys that already have established themselves there know their area, know their spot, know their audience. Yeah. It's tough coming from out here to go back in there to kind of figure that out. So so are you are you the main brewer now? Man hands. <laughs> <laughs> Touche, sir. Touché. Um, no, I'm not. Okay. No, a- Andrew's, the, uh, Andrew's our head brewer. And um, so he, you know, he brews most of the beer. But with the two spots now, uh, I'm, uh, me and George are the other two brewers. So, but George is also our packaging yep. manager. So on days where we've got a batch of beer that needs to get brewed in in Northport, but George is canning in Lindenhurst, then I'll take the batch, or vice versa. You know, some some days we'll send Andrew up there, and I'll take a batch in Lindenhurst. So we're all doing it all. You know, I was gonna say that's got to be tough. Like too. just the, yeah. again, not even the scheduling with the ingredients and everything that needs to be where it needs to be, but then getting a brewer on that system that day yep. to get it done yeah. and splitting all that that team up. Did you have to hire a lot more people? Obviously, you would when we went to Linhurst, but like your core people, did you have to yeah, designate no, no. them out or? We didn't. We didn't really bring on too much more production staff. We only uh, Tom came on board, so he's our cellar man in Linhurst. Okay, and a uh, good guy, and he's been you know he's been great, but he's really been the only one that we added to the team. Because um, most of our brewing now gets done in Lindenhurst, and um, just because of the size. Yeah, it's yeah. just it, again, it's just um, it's just much more efficient system. So, um, and is and, that due to the, the type of equipment you purchase for the location, or? Well, first of all, you know it's twice the size. Right. So you're you're brewing a batch of beer in X amount of hours, and you just you're, you're yielding twice as much from that batch. Sure. So we can fill a 20-barrel fermenter in one turn, you know, whereas in Northport, it's going to be two turns. 10-barrel, right. So it's two turns to to fill up uh, one tank there. And no one wants to do a double brew day. Nobody wants to do do that that shit. (laughs) So, uh, and on top of it now, it's like the the first couple times we brewed, we were like, oh, man, this is like a nightmare because you're getting used to the equipment, you know, and now it's like... It's so nice to brew there. Like, it's so, you know, it's it's such an easier system to work on. Did you ever... uh, Fix the problem with the rakes. Remember how they weren't. Yeah, so, your, your so the rain out was. The rakes are still undersized, but we found a couple workarounds with it, where you know we can get them on on most of our beers. We'll get them working pretty quickly. Oh, cool. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, grain out's never been a problem there. Um, you know, we we've got a a huge heat exchanger there, so I mean, we can mm. just knock out so quickly. Yeah. And the whirlpool, the whirlpool, the, the dedicated whirlpool has been great too because that really pulls all the hops right out, makes a nice cone for us. So you know we we, we knock out through that heat exchanger like 32, 33 gallons a minute. That's awesome. Which you know I mean, for us is is great compared to what we're doing in Northport. So yeah, it's got to be nice to like use new toys. You're yeah. like, oh look at this, look yeah, at what I can do. So that's oh why immediately God. when you're like, you anything you know any any. What's on the horizon for yeah. expansion? I'm what like, other toys can like, I buy? Oh, depalletize. I'm like, oh, <laughs> you know, um, and I'm just trying to think of like all the fun things I could get. Yeah, like, you know, <laughs> some sort of distribution pack. I mean, a repalletizer, right? I mean, to get those back. <laughs> yeah. I'm just using Pete's logic, right? <laughs> I mean, you just throw Pete's logic in there. Yeah. Uh, it actually puts it on the pallet for you. <laughs> So. Yeah, that's that's called George and the other guys. <laughs> <laughs> I am the repalletizer. We actually bought like a spent grain system, so it'll oh, like right. it'll push the grain out for you. But uh, we haven't we haven't even installed it yet because it's actually been so it's been a lot easier for us to to get the grain out of there than we thought it was going to be. 
So, um, yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's a, a lot going on. I mean, the town's going to be exploding. Um, the the restaurants, bars, stuff like that's going to continue moving forward. The new new place is going in the Brew House Pub now, right? There's going to be a new r- restaurant there. Oh, or? yeah, yeah. It's like a taco. And oh, yeah. right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There. Yeah, much, Again. much better than the shitty bar that was there. Hell yeah. 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 Like, what that, I, there's that other one, too, the Hunter and Thief or something that's supposed to open. That was a steakhouse, right, over by... By the pizza place, yeah. over that way. Yeah, yeah. By they, which pizza place? Yeah, the one on Hoffman. They're, they're open, right? Well, they, they might they, be. I don't, mm, so. Might be. I, I, I'm just seeing you know so much opportunity, not just for you, but for all the businesses in, in Lindhurst. And I know, like you were saying before, the conglomerate... No, that's not the word. The collaboration, I guess. I don't know. With all the other people in there, it really has worked out. Collective? Well, sh- co- nah, I was going to say uh, conglomerate, but that wasn't the word for it at all. Uh, I have too much beer, and I'm still drunk from yesterday. <laughs> so uh, the the idea that everyone's kind of working together to kind of push this yeah. town forward, and, and like Joe was saying, people are saying, you know, I'm tired of Babylon. Let's find someplace new. you got to provide something for that mm-hmm. audience, and that audience is starting to come out now, especially, you know, Hopefully towards the end of this, yeah. as we've been saying for the last year or so, it's the end of it. It's the end of it. We're, We're turning out. the corner on yeah. the pandemic. All right, <laughs> there's just another corner right over well, there. Like, and you shit. know, let's face it, Lindenhurst is a huge community. Uh, yep. And so, th- where have they been going for the past ten years? I mean, they're going yeah. to Babylon. Babylon. They're going to Bayshore, yeah, Mass Farmingdale, Beagle, wherever, wherever yeah. it is. And now they're like. We could just stay home. Yeah. I mean, we could just walk around <laughs> Five our neighborhood. Five minutes from my house. <laughs> and there's all these great places. Yeah. I mean, that's and that's what draws people to to a town like that. That's where, you know, you'll see property values rising. You'll see people, you know, I mean, this is... Thank you, you for that. <laughs> you're very welcome. <laughs> why, why do you think, um, you know, TriTech is putting in the well or put the well in over there yeah. with, you know, however many units they have, 180 something units, right? Um because they realize people are going to want to come and live in this town. They see right. what's going on there. Yeah, they're not stupid people. And and they know that what they do will reflect back on the village, and the village then will reflect back on that and add more. And hopefully, Absolutely. hopefully you know, they buy that thankful, fucking right? wall we've, we've got all these people now who are going to be residents of the the community. But those people want to be residents of that community. Right. So it's and they will hopefully want to buy your beer. Hopefully. Yeah. Oh yeah. Every <laughs> single last. At month. least some of them are gonna. Yeah. <laughs> That's the whole thing, they already so. are. Trust me. They're coming in the back door. They're like, really? yeah, I live right here. This is like uh-huh. my backyard. I can walk right into a brewery. It's fantastic. Yeah. Kevin, I want to give you an opportunity to give us the big plug. Give us uh, all the contact information that people don't know it by now. They're idiots. But you know, you you give it, <laughs> give it to us. Give us the social media. Give the website and everything like that. All right. Well, uh, again, I'm Kevin from Sand City. Uh, our website's www.sandcitybeer. You can follow us on Instagram at at Sand City Brewery and at Sand City South, and on Instagram, Sand City Brewing Company. And uh, you know, we 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 love that you guys love us, and uh, we're we're so thankful to be here with Mike, Pete, and Steve. And um, we hope for any of you who haven't come down to visit us, come check us out in both locations. Uh, we're open seven days a week, starting at noon, both spots, and. Um, that's about it. Which, by the way, is great. The hours are awesome that you're open every freaking day. I yeah, never you, have to worry about a day off. You don't think about it that way. Nah, moment, it's right? just like, like oh, just show shit, up. Wait, <laughs> you're there. <laughs> You'll be there. Just just, just show up. <laughs> when We're you there. guys first opened up, I, I remember going over Mike's house, and I'm dropping something off, and he's like, yeah, I got some more Sand City. <laughs> yeah, I'm spending my whole paycheck there. This is great. <laughs> but it was for, you know, it was a good reason. It was like, yeah, I could fucking finally, I don't have to go all the way up to North, but I could get the beer now. Take an hour out right of my Right in my day. neighborhood. So great. It is yep. nice. It's nice to have that community feel. Yeah. Uh, and on top of it, have a great brewery like Sand City and all the other places, 27A and, mm-hmm. and WAME Works and all the restaurants yeah. and everything. The whole community is great, and, and we really appreciate everything that those businesses do for our community. Um, and like I said, I was there prior to any of these things opening, and I've seen such great changes. And this is the way it is for anyone that's listening, for all communities. You know, embrace this kind of you know change because it's going to help everyone out. It's going to help out your, as Kevin was saying, your property value. But besides that, just something to do. It's yeah. something new, something to do, and you won't get sick of it because most of these, um, you know, small businesses are really doing great things to try to impress the community and help everyone out. It, it really is a, a big deal in regards to trying to get this idea. After the pandemic, everyone just needs something like this for sure. Yeah, I totally agree. Kevin, really appreciate you hanging out with us tonight. Thank you very much. 
I will see you. Me. I'll see you tomorrow when I come down and pick up some more beer. <laughs> <laughs> he will. He will. No, I will. This is the word with Mike, Pete, and Steve. GovsRadio.com. Steve, any last words before we get out of here? I like turtles. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> Pete? Don't forget to have your pet spayed or neutered. This is the word with Mike. if your dog's an asshole at yeah. San City Brewing Company. <laughs> Sorry, Joe. <laughs> this is the word with Mike, Pete, and Steve. GovsRadio.com. Thanks a lot for joining us. Check us out on our podcast coming out in a few days on Spotify, on iTunes, and, of course, always on the Hopped Up Network. And we out. Well, that's two hours of your life that you'll never get back. Are you kidding me? Yeah, yeah. Please hang up and try again. This has been the Words on Govs Radio. I hope you're drunk enough.